ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today on the couch, we have Josh Snyder, <laughs> Grunt Trot and Tad, <laughs> and the Hughes. We have, uh, I wasn't expecting him to come today, but Brian Fritz, 13 Scars, Big Top, and the Accused. And of course, the founder and of the Accused. <laughs> I was going to say front man, but that was Blaine Cook. So the founder of the Accused, I like it. Tom Niedemeyer. Yeah. And uh, in the previous uh, recording with Blaine and Alex, I said... <laughs> Nina Meyer, so but it's <laughs> Niemeyer, right? Yes, it is. Niemeyer. Yes. yes. So I screwed up often, but uh, ladies okay. and gentlemen, Tom Niemeyer. All right. How you guys doing? Very good. How are you doing? Ah, I'm good. I'm good. I enjoy good. this. And, yes. Um, um, so, Josh, you've played with everybody. Um, yep, everybody. You <laughs> played with the accused, which we'll get into later. Yep. You were also, to my surprise, in Tad, which is one of my favorite bands. And um, and uh, what were and Grunt Truck? What were some of your other ventures? Uh, well, the first thing I did was with you. Remember? Yes. And that Indeed. would be Crisis. Oh, what's the trick question? Sixteen years old. Who's ready? Ladies and gentlemen, Josh was sixteen. I was actually sixteen at the time as well. Metal Meltdown Three. Metal Meltdown Three. It has Josh's band Crisis. This that. was on my old label, Everat, and now it's up on the Pig Records Bandcamp for anyone who wants to listen to it. And you can listen to these things for free. There is no charge. Uh, if you... Coven's on here. Shock Treatment's on here. Oh, Shock Treatment. Yep. Wow. Oh, the whole history. There's show, 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 show and Tell. That show was and Tell, that's that right. That was his, his wow. first band. You yep, were in yeah. Show and Tell? Yeah, but I never played on the recording. Dehumanizers? Look, right. at, that, look at that lineup on there. Yeah, that's a Crisis huh. did the legendary parties. No, yeah. Oh, no, the crisis party. Yeah, crisis. No. But we, it wasn't crisis party. No, it was no, no crisis did. party. Yeah. Yeah. We rented every Elks club, and it was always had dehumanizers. We were always playing. Yeah, no, they did some great shows. Do you remember the there. Knights of Columbus on the Bothell Everett Highway? Absolutely. That was yeah. a big one. Yes. Cops always busted it. Mm -hmm. We had kegs. Oh, it was so great. You'd always get the back kitchen of these, these you know, like you have to take all the tables, set them up in the front, <laughs> yeah. in front of where the kitchen is, in the hall, and then everyone, all the people are drinking in the back. You know, backstage in the kitchen, and then fuck. I mean, I just like setting up the shows on the tables. You know, the their little banquet tables. We did that at Washington Hall. With the <laughs> I was there. Yeah, Washington Hall's Hall is another <laughs> great place. Right. Oh, that, 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 yeah, the tables broke. Yeah. Yeah, we went, but we played with the Gits at that that show. That show was pretty. Yeah, the Gits, the Gits were great yeah. too. I think the accused that were on milk crates. Or something. I think we had milk crates. Something. something. Yeah, something. had to make. Do that, that was on. It was the fold out legs. Table and, and then one of the legs broke where my drum set was on, and I went sideways. So it was a flying V of and, and you've never recovered. You're still yeah. sideways. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm upside down. In fact, okay. And uh, like I said, we weren't expecting Brian here today. We were eventually going to get 13 scars on the show, but these two gentlemen He's brought a him. living member. <laughs> yeah, the last living member out in prison. <laughs> The uh, <laughs> thirteen scars. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can find a couple in the in the mental institutions, drug rehabs, and yeah. mm -hmm. no, we're not going to name any. Yeah. No, no, no names. No. The, 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 the big, big biggest thing I know about thirteen scars: whenever they finish playing, the club cuts them off and kicks them out. So, yeah, that's why we had our happy to get, go back in and you know get our get paid. All right, so Tommy, yes, yes. the original accused was, yes. uh, I believe, John Dolan on vocals, sort of. Chewy Batterman on uh, bass. Close, yeah, close. Uh, Dana, who I constantly make the mistake of calling him Carvey, but right. he, he's Dana Collins right. on drums. Um, kind of, kind of, sort of. So, yeah, what, so okay. what, what happened before this lineup? Okay, happened? well, actually, okay, 1981, in 1981, Chewy uh, Batterman, Chabon Batterman, Rest in and, peace. Rest in peace. And uh, Dana Collins and I uh, formed The Accused okay. in 1981. And Chewie was singing, actually. We were a three-piece. We had no bass player. Chewie was singing. Yeah, he sounded just like Cal from Discharge. Wow, I wish I would have seen that. He's, yeah, he sounded like Discharge. Really, and, and he always, not always, but he got he got to singing so much um, when we were rehearsing at the time. 
that he would carry around chloroseptic because he was fucking his throat up so bad. He would squirt chloroseptic constantly, be squirting chloroseptic on his throat, yeah. which numbs your throat, right? But he was just, you know, little guy. I mean, he was tiny before he got his growth spurt and stuff. He was just a little tiny kid. And he sounded like Cal from Discharge. But the Y era, which is, if you know Discharge, it's like, that's really like super Cal, you know, like, you know, really right. like it's super Cal. Stuff. Yeah. And this little guy sounded just like, so Chewy sang for about the first, almost the first year, pretty much. And then was that, was that doing shows at all? We played our first show. Yeah. With him singing and no bass player at uh, Langley high. Langley right. high. Yeah, um, so he was singing or he wasn't playing bass. Or no, he was doing both. He was oh. just singing. Yeah. Cause yeah, I remember when he played bass, boy, that guy was electric. He was in the air. Yeah, he hopped the floor. I mean, he was crazy. Yeah. So. Yeah. He was awesome. a totally awesome performer. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and, and uh, in the early years, the cues, uh, I, I know Tommy and Blaine very well, but, Chewy was the one I was actually closest with. And yeah, 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 I was, was very sorry. <laughs> he was, that. yeah, well, he was my best friend from childhood. So yeah, he was. We were tight too. The recordings with him singing are on the archive tapes. They it's are. Fun. Yeah, so I was just going to say that first that, that first show that we did with him at the high school on on Whidbey is. Uh, wow, we don't have any of those archive tapes. I'd like to talk to you about. <laughs> we'll those. talk to you about releasing big those records. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So anyways, that went on for a little while. And then I sang for a minute when Chewy uh, switched over to bass. And then we got John uh, about a year and a half into it. Okay. So, 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 so about 1983 or 82, or 80, 82 late 82, okay. early 83, John came on. Uh, Dana met him in Hawaii when Dana was on vacation in Hawaii. Um, wow, he flew from Hawaii to join the band. <laughs> yeah, no, he was. It turned out that when we were he, both on vacation. No, when he met John, John was on his way to move to Vancouver, Washington, of all places. Um, ironically enough, what which a is poor choice. Cool. Yeah, pretty close. But that's where his parents lived, and so he moved down there, and then proceeded to uh, change his plans and move up to uh, Oak Harbor area or Skagit Valley area, uh, Mount Vernon, to start his first year of college, which happened to be the year I graduated, and so I said I would go to college in Mount Vernon. Um, then at that point, cause I was going to go to community college somewhere and, but wanted to get off the island cause there was no community college. And so we stayed as close as we could to Oak Harbor because that's where Dana lived and that's where we practiced. And those guys were both still in high school. So we did that for about a year and a half once we got John. Good. Good. Yeah. So, so, and I, I just want to point out cause it's pretty rare, a college graduate it was rock and roll. Huh? I didn't graduate. Well, he didn't graduate. No, I did at least he started. I did a couple of years. Yeah, I did a couple, couple of years. years. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I learned a few things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, unlike the rest <laughs> of the musicians who usually do a couple of years in the joint. Right. <laughs> right. All right. So, so yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, through about, are we going to, are we, what was the question? Are we, I, no, uh, no, when, no, 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 yeah, so just, I was going over the original lineup. Okay, right. And yeah. getting to First the point where John right. joined. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And then we did a bunch of shows with John. We toured uh, uh, up to Canada. Played a show with the Dave Low Abortions up there and Subhumans and Personality Crisis, which was awesome in Victoria. And uh, then we went down to the West Coast with John and we did a bunch of shows in San Francisco and Berkeley. And <clears throat> around that time we were doing... Okay, the, so you guys did do some tours. And, oh, yeah. And this is the lineup that was on the eje uh, accused rejectors correct. split. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, during that same time we had befriended the rejectors and uh, hung out with them a lot. Actually, we went to Burien a lot and just kind of hung out and partied with those guys. Um, and then they came up with the idea of doing a split record, a split album or whatever, and, uh, got us into the studio for, convinced us to get, save our money and get into the studio for the first time. And who, who put that record out? That was Malcolm Conover, the Fatal Erection Records guy. Okay. Um, and from Eugene at the time, uh, Eugene, Oregon. And, uh. How did you guys connect with him? Uh, through the rejectors. They were just. Oh, I see. They yeah. friends Do you know them. how many copies they pressed? Uh, a thousand or five hundred? I want to say uh, over five hundred. It had to have been a thousand. thousand. Yeah. yeah. Those records today go for about four hundred dollars. Wow. If wow. you can find one. Right. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. So that was the beginning of that. And uh, yeah. So that's how that and why do they go for that amount of money? Because it's good? Or because oh, it's, it's collectible? Because it's, it's collectible. Yeah. yeah. It is good. Is it the music? I it's not amazing. It's not amazing. I mean, it's straight, pretty straight, straight hardcore. I mean, it, it, it's you know, we tried to be as. Have you not heard any? No, of I know. You know the songs. I'm just thing. trying to. I'm just trying to get everyone enthused about. It. You got to put it. That's in. why it's worth 400 bucks. Yeah, you can't. You can't find them, and it was never repressed. Right? It's that good. Right. Yeah, it was right. good shit for nineteen. It's that good. We're gonna you know? do the same. You know, we're gonna do the same thing. A lot of bands. We're gonna re-record a bunch of those songs and reissue them. You know, with John singing though, of course, but with the new lineup and stuff like that, re revamp them. 
that's in the plans. Now, when did it's good material? But it just it wasn't you know it was recorded on a total shoestring. When know. did John? Uh, when, part, when did you when guys did John ways? part and after why? late eighty four something like that? Just musical differences, same old same old story. Okay. Uh, musical differences, really. And now today, you have a very good relationship still oh, yeah. with John. Oh yeah, you mm -hmm. guys kept that. We kept in yeah, touch it just to a degree, okay. uh huh. But lately, uh, you know, over the past few years, for sure, closer and closer. And you know, so that's why he's, we're back together again and working with him again. So I believe Blaine Cook was his replacement. Yes, he was. And what year was that? That was say, late eighty four, or uh, no? I don't think it was. I, 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 maybe it was late eighty four, but eighty five to be safe. You know, to be absolutely positive. But I, I don't know that it was any... It could have been 84. That was a big year, 84. If, that, if all this took place in one year, that's an amazing year. Yeah, um, it was an amazing movie and an amazing book, too. Yeah, 1984. Right, right. One fabulous right. book. And the right. movie was incredible. Right, so, yeah. yeah. 1984 is the year. Yeah. Um, okay, now when Blaine joined the band... Mm -hmm. He was on their impression. He was a full-fledged member with an equal share of everything the band got. Is yeah. that the case? And did you and he have any terms at the time he joined? Uh, there wasn't any terms, no. no. Um, uh, full-fledged member, full-fledged meaning? Meaning if there was four guys in the band, he was 25% of the band and got 25% of everything. That's how, that's how everything worked in that band, yeah. Okay. All right. So that is the case. Yeah. Okay. And then um, at that time, that's how everything worked in that band. And now, Chewy was replaced by Alex Sabald, and it's kind of a tr tragic story. Why was Chewy replaced? Um, that was basically um, uh, personal issues outside of the band. Band, yeah. And um, um, but it was hard. It was that was that was a difficult that was a difficult period because he was my you know my best friend. Yeah, and he you know, was, uh, uh, growing up, we we did everything together and and hung out together and were super tight. But uh, <clears throat> just you know, various things at that time were taking place that uh, were interfering with the progress and productivity of the band. So. With his personal life, you mean? Yeah, he was having troubles. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe he had some substance abuse. I'm not sure about. Things, I'm not. I'm not sure about. You know, any of that. whatever he was. He had, during his time, he, I thought he was absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah. so. You guys were friends from since California. Yeah, too. yeah, we were childhood friends actually. Yeah, so <clears throat> it was that was a very difficult decision to do that. And w plus, he was my roommate at the time, you know. So I mean, I I you know made the call as I as I saw fit, and it was the worst phone call I've ever probably had to make. And you were living with him? Yeah. Well, and my, my guess is too, he probably had an idea it was coming. <laughs> I don't know if he ever thought it would come to Well, he was pretty out of it, so I don't know if he really knew what was, knew what was going yeah. on. Right? I mean, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't. I can't. I can't it's, tell you. Yeah, one of the but it was sad. Tragic. Yeah, for Washington sure. Washington State music stories. Yeah, so but then, we were right in the middle of recording. At that point, we were in the middle of recording um, songs for More Fun, for the More Fun, uh, an Opus Casket Funeral album, right? And so uh, we had already got had Chewy's bass tracks recorded, you know, for that record. And uh, Combat wanted the record now, you know, that, like we were behind schedule. So we needed a bass player, like, right away, you know. And that's when you guys got yeah. Alex. Well, ball. yeah, Blaine, Blaine suggested he knew a guy, <clears throat> um, Alex, and uh, we should try him out or whatever. And so we tried him out. So Blaine brought Alex in. Yeah, Blaine, yeah he was Blaine's, uh, Blaine's friend. Yeah. Um, we didn't know him before that. Okay. And Alex was also on the... You know, twenty five percent of everything. Were there any term? No term. There wasn't any terms, but we treated we treated each each member seemed to feel okay with what they were getting. Okay, you know, at the time, but no, there weren't any kind of written terms, terms or anything. anything. No prenuptial agreement. No, no prenup. Everybody, every band. Well, it's like the punk rock. No stuff. bands at, at that <laughs> level They're, usually are, are talking to lawyers. They're no, no, I, I'm not talking about lawyers. They, they're, but, you know what I'm saying, though. Not necessarily talking to lawyers, but even talking to each other about well, percentages right you know, right. know what i mean it's like it, it, you know you would have seemed trivial and, and it wasn't very punk rock to discuss stuff like that right and yeah no and it's more it's i'm not it didn't really back then when i'm talking 
today, these guys do feel they have a claim to the name accused AD yeah. and they have the right, which we're going to go into later. And that's why I'm bringing out what happened in the early times. So um, now next comes along Josh Schneider, if I'm C- correct. Cinder. Josh, yes. Yeah. Hey, Josh you, Schneider. You I do know him. him. Yeah, Josh everybody. Schneider is another guy. And, One day at a time. I yeah. Actually, I was, at that, I was on... Uh, Dukes of Hazard for a No, Josh bit. Schneider was another drummer and he was absolutely insane. Um, oh, that might have been and, me. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Was, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Bad. Josh, Josh. Not a good drummer, but insane. Mm-hmm. Josh Definitely. said he was actually a pretty damn good drummer, but oh, he was. That um, couldn't have been me. Let's um, speed up the pace. Bam. Yeah. Let's speed up the pace. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, so, you replaced Dana, am I correct? No. No. Okay. Uh, after Dana was Nick Utech. Okay. And Nick Utech, N I C K, I guess capital U T T E C H, maybe Utech, um, from uh, Bellevue area. Okay, uh, he came in and replaced Dana. Yeah, did he record on anything? Uh, there's some live stuff in Europe right. that he's okay, on, on some board tapes that that are pretty good. Where did um, he come from? He came from Bellevue. But I mean, who dug him up? Uh, he was a friend of Dolomites, I believe. Dolomite oh, really? Told us about him. Yeah. Now there's somebody's name. Yeah, who who is Dolomite? Greg Greg Bernier, friend, old yeah. friend of the band. Yeah. Okay. Um, I believe he said, yeah, I know this drummer, dude. Double kit guy. Like, okay, so Nick cool. replaced Dana. Yeah. Now, why was that? Uh, that was that was definitely a musical difference. This thing, um, Dana was just kind of cha- changing kind of how he was playing. His style was kind of changing a little bit. He was kind of veering off, off, off course from what we were kind of after as far as the drummer goes. Um, it wasn't, you know. It wasn't going to work really if he was going to continue doing that, and he was pretty, pretty, pretty focused on on altering his kind of approach to drumming, um, <clears throat> which was just musical differences again. You know, that's all that was. Again, very difficult decision to make. You know, knew the guy since eighty you know, eighty one. I talked to him occasionally. Yeah, great guy, man. I, I, I talked to him about two months ago, and I, I do talk to Dana occasionally yeah. as well. I awesome like, guy. Yeah, he's a really nice awesome guy. Awesome guy, yeah. And yeah. Uh, he's down in California these yeah. days. So. Great drummer, too. Man. Yeah. But, so yeah. That, that that was that. And then uh, we got Nick the Hammer. They called him Nick the Hammer Utech. And uh, that was a pro- more appropriate for what we were doing. Th- that's when we got into the, like, brutality and corruption era, um, tapping the vein kind of era. You know, okay, so the so, pre O ring, and then O Steve O ring Nelson came in after Nick. Oh, real? Oh, so, okay, mm-hmm. I didn't realize Steve wasn't that early. Okay. Yeah. So, um, okay, so so Nick comes in. Mm-hmm. We know why he replaced Dana. Mm-hmm. Nick leaves the band. Mm-hmm. Um, so Nick basically did a lot of touring with the band. Yeah, and, he did. Yeah, and, and, but at least really one Europe tour studio work. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then Steve comes in. So did Steve? Yeah. What did Steve record on anything? Yeah, he was on the um, hymns for the deranged. Uh, okay. stuff and then some demo sh- stuff at the same time 89 ish okay. 1989 ish and are we up to Josh yet we're getting there we're getting there yeah but Steve Nelson he was from Steve O-Ring Nelson was from March of Crimes that yeah, was his a original great band and Steve I've seen perform many oh, many yeah. times pretty damn good drummer I loved his drumming he, he was as, as far as being in pocket almost in caliber you know the same kind of caliber for me as a guitar player as relaxing and comfortable and as uh, per- not predictable, but you just know kind of where he's going to be behind. You know, you don't even have to look at him. He's always there. You know, he's second to Josh, but he's right. And as far as the, the reliability is the word I'm looking for. Great drummer. Um, he was from Archer Crimes, which featured Ben Shepard. Uh, now in sound or. Of yeah, I remember I used to, when I booked right, at so the Gorilla Gardens, I, just I get, used to put Marchie Crimes on a lot right. of shows. I just want to get all the name dropping and family tree shit all connected up. Right. And you know, while we're doing this. Bass player, March. Oh, well, in the new one, Andy Carroll. Yeah, we'll get to that. And uh, so then comes Josh after uh, O-Ring. Okay. Correct. Which I learned the songs that were on Hymns in the Range, basically. Okay. But that, was, that was what I had that. That's, was that, that 1990? Was Are we doing a timeline thing? It doesn't have. I'm good. No, I'm just okay. trying to find. And, and, and I got to salute you on the signing of Josh. Cause yeah. Because yeah, you grabbed a professional drummer. And, oh, yeah. Absolutely. And he's been a professional drummer oh, ever since. Yeah. No, when he came down to, to the rehearsals, um, I'll act like he's not here right now. When he came down to the tryouts, I mean, um, we had had a couple guys, I think, come in before him that day or that or the day before or whatever. And then this guy comes along and we play, I remember playing Slow Death with him. He goes, I go, what song do you want to play? My say, favorite. Yeah, he goes, I don't know, Slow Death. And I was like, really? 
I was thinking to myself, okay, we'll see what this fucking long haired little shit has to do, you know, can do about this. So go ahead, start it off. And it starts off with her. And he just fucking destroyed, you know, it was fucking amazing. I mean, I was just, I tried to keep my cool about it because that was our whole deal. You know, Blaine, Alex, and I were like, okay, now don't, let's not let anybody know that they're in before we all talk about it or whatever. And so we were all kind of being, oh, yeah, that was okay. Well, you know, we'll get back to you or whatever. And as he's packing out his drums, which was a lot of fucking drums because it was double kick set and he a proper double kick set with all the shit that he played, all of it. And he's loading his shit out final pieces and I couldn't fucking wait. I just went out and said, dude, as far as I'm concerned, you're fucking in. Because that is what he said. You know, you're probably a quote. He said, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, it's a done deal, but I got to go in and deal with these guys. Yeah, I got to go talk to them. And those guys were very impressed too, right? Uh, they weren't so happy about the fact that I told him that he was in before, oh, <laughs> before talking to them. But I was like, and they told me that when I went back in, that you didn't tell him, did you? And I said, well, fuck yeah. Are we going to find another drummer that's like that? And I said, no fucking way. Not in this town. Not in this fucking coast. Not in this country. That's the guy. You know, they're like, well, all right, whatever. So in trouble. <laughs> I was it. getting in trouble for telling him, you know. Yeah. It was funny. And in the interview we had with Blaine and Alex, they were actually, they were very complimentary of you. So, well, I mean, I think I have a good relationship with those guys. Good, good. And uh, yeah. I just ran into Alex at uh, Fred Myers. Okay. Now yeah. let's get some chicken. <laughs> get some chicken. Who was getting the chicken? I was. Oh, okay. All right. What was Alex getting? <laughs> Alex was in line. I don't know what he was getting, but I was, and then him and I, and I said, oh, hey. Dolphin. And uh, he didn't recognize me. I had to pull my mask out. I guess I look, I look so much better now that he just, you know. You're fighting like, he was so, oh, yeah, you're gorgeous. Yeah, he just said, wow, because I remember you being a lot uglier than that. <laughs> I don't know, the perm used to fit you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought Alex says that. Uh, uh, I, I, do, I don't, I know Tommy and Blaine quite well. I didn't, I don't know Alex that well. I've interacted with him, but he has a, he has a dry sense of humor that's quite good. I, I kind of like yeah. it. So, okay. Yeah. So, um, you joined the accused at this point in. Yeah, I, I saw, and I was in this band that I had started called Breakneck and it hadn't, we hadn't put the full band together. It was me and a guitar player. And we were writing songs and got a whole bunch of stuff. And one of the songs that we had was a, a, like the first opening riff of Pounding Nails. I wrote that on the guitar and we played that in Breakneck. And that was the best thing I had. And I brought that and asked these guys if they liked the Tom's like, yeah, fuck yeah. And you're not, ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding, you know. So it fit my drum style <laughs> yeah. because it was, it has this double bass thing. And then that's kind of, that's kind of how I think that, uh, I blended in with the band as I actually had more. I wasn't just playing the drums. I could actually write songs too. Mm -hmm. And they let me have a couple of riffs. I think I wrote a, 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 a little guitar part on Emma's from Martha. Yep. And then that's it. But, and then, you know, wrote, the names are on there. If you wrote it in, in order on that album, I think. But, uh, yeah. So I called. It was the, the Rocket. Remember that magazine? Or the, the Rocket? I definitely remember. The Rocket. Mm -hmm. called, looking in the Rocket and, uh, and this band looking for a drummer. My friend who was into, uh, my best friend uh, is Jeff Bennett. He, he was into Skinny Puppy and all this stuff that I didn't really I like. Band. And punk bands. I, I was like more into metal. Puppy. Like I was, I was more into getting into what Metallica was doing. You know, and, and so this was, the cues to me was like, well, wow, because they're doing all this cool guitar stuff. I can play drums, so I like that. I didn't quite get the vocals, but I mean, because I was young and dumb about it, you know, but I, I liked it. It's crazy. And so I call uh, Belaine answers and he's like, yeah, he goes, we're looking for someone to play a uh, real double bass or something. And I said, oh, real drumming. He'll quote. They were that. looking for a profession. He wanted yeah, I remember he's, that. Real he quotes that all the time. Yeah. And I said, oh, real drumming. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, okay. And so then whatever, we set the time up and I came down and did it. Did play. Blaine play drums himself back then? Blaine, I don't know. I, I believe he plays drums at the accused AV practices sometimes. Oh, I bet he does. So, but, but I, you know, he, he doesn't claim to be. But mm. so, and just as a side note, my brother, Infrared from the Dehumanizers, a very skilled drummer, um, he is also very, very fond of your drumming. As he well. is. I'm fond of his drumming. Yeah. So, well, I, I believe he's actually <laughs> talked to Tommy mm -hmm. about it many oh, yeah. times mm -hmm. about. Yeah, yeah, how great he thought you were. So yeah, shit, that's cool because he's got. I I think Infra Ed is uh, 
I mean, he's a legendary Seattle. Yeah. Master. Good. I'm going to hook you up with his solo CDs when you guys oh, yeah. are. I have the 8 by 10 photo to human arts because he did four separate photos of each yes. band member mm-hmm. yeah, as, a, Joey, as an 8 by 10. And, and his got this chrome uh, Slingerland drum set that I always wanted. Where did you guys get all this money to get this chrome drum set? <laughs> the, uh, That's all I can <laughs> He's not going to say. No, I don't mind. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the better question would be, where did we get the money to put out the cues? <laughs> right, That's yeah, a right. good story. But yeah. No, yeah, ever, all of us had jobs and worked very hard. Yeah. We pumped all our money into punk rock. You had jobs you at guys. that point in time? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Hey, no, he went up and I remember he had to go up and ask his dad about a couple questions when it came down to money and stuff. We would be waiting in the basement down there and he'd be like, hang on, I got to go talk. It was, it was, it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> he was just this kid that was like running a label. Yeah. We had, uh, yeah. So, so I couldn't I afford it. to buy a drum set until I didn't get a drum set until I was in TAD and, and finally had, was able to get an endorsement and I got a, a free drum set. I Who used the same you? drum set. On on Granny Lacker and Undertaker, and even the first Tad album is the same drum set because I couldn't afford to buy a fucking drum set and be in a band playing every night. So I'm asking you, where did you fucking get the money? What <laughs> job paid for that drum set? That's an expensive drum set. I tell you, just like I asked him, where does Dana get this fucking <laughs> oh, sonar? sonar. Yeah, it's like geez. a five thousand dollar drum kit, and there's this like two dollar pump band, you know, playing with this. He's got this guitar; it's like broken in half, and he's got this brand new drum. Do you know what yeah. I'm talking about? That yeah, well, the sonar Dana, kit. Now Dana, now he must have. Dana makes good money today, and Dana did he, did he have a good job? Back well, then? no, it was I. I may be speaking out of line. I'm not sure, but you know his his father was missing in action. Oh, MIA. Yeah, and um, the, I think it was Navy or something like that. And so I, I'm not I'm not sure, but I think maybe his they were take you know I think they take care of the the wives or whatever of these people. I think you know and, and they and possibly you know that was so the Navy bought his drums. So. Maybe I'm not I'm not 100 percent on that, but I'm I think I. Th- I mean, she, you know, his mom didn't work, you know. That's but. the most expensive drum set you can buy, sonar. Really? Okay. I, I don't yeah, know. It's not like just a it. nice drum set. It's like, it's like so expensive that no, and it's like yeah, the super know. top of line special black <laughs> hardware. <laughs> yes, like, it was. At that time, <laughs> nobody had that kind of thing. It yeah. was just like, it, it made amazing. you guys look great on stage. <laughs> it, did, it did. It was a facade. It was a, a very. And it sounds good on that album, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Matt stories. The, yeah. the drum sound, and he had flight cases, matching flight cases for all of it. Mm. <laughs> was he just laughing about that? He, well, yeah, he, he kind of just ex- he was. That's what he was okay. going to get. Yeah, I'm getting the sonar. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, it was just very matter of fact. Yeah. I was pretty jealous about yeah. it. When Josh joined the band, because I went to school with Josh, we knew each other young, yep. and he everybody knew Josh was a great drummer, you know, and. And then they accused, and it was two different camps, you know, like you say, you were metal. Yeah. And it was well, metal. Let's, so that let's, was let's slow down here. He wasn't oh, just yes, metal. Yes. He was pop metal, spandex there, metal. Yeah. I wasn't going to Tommy that. didn't know this. Crisis <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was, was kind of pop metal, wasn't it? They were great. I like pop metal, so yeah. I thought they were great. Obviously, pop I put metal. them on the record. I, I certainly wouldn't have yeah. called it pop metal <laughs> myself. I wouldn't have worn that big T-shirt. I'm in a pop metal band, maybe K-pop, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I so thought it was pretty hardcore metal. It was that progressive uh, metal that still had that yeah. and the hard beats and yeah. stuff. You know? yeah. I didn't know anything about punk, though. And so when I went and joined these guys, it was like, I just knew it was a good band that was had, like they were tight. Because I, w- I was definitely into wanting to be tight. I was really interested. I practiced so much. And I just, I just felt like I can do something with this. And if I just keep practicing and then these guys were like, I finally found some people that I was like, yeah, the work ethic was like, I was right up with Tom yeah. going, playing double bass. And I was like, okay, I'm here. He's, and then he's going, Oh, you're right there. Not everybody's just getting up there with me. And so it was great. You know, it was like, Oh yeah. If there's anything you can compare the prior music or recordings to from when Josh gets in. And I hear this a lot from people that, you know, talk about the record is it just it was it's so tight it just got really super it's tight. because of, of him and i have this thing and it took me a, years later to figure it out but now that him and i when we write stuff and play together it's the physical thing that happens that there it's like there isn't I, i've played with a lot of people and uh it's like it just locks with yeah, it's locked there's really some sort of like you know uh, astral shit happening <laughs> yeah. with when him and i play and that's why that, that record sounds so good it's definitely because of his right hand you know, it's like, like Alex, you know, he tries to do the, 
the same the cue songs. It just doesn't sound the same to me. This is missing the right hand. The so, left hand's great, but the right hand's just the most important thing. We, we've been <laughs> singing the praises of Josh's drumming, mm-hmm. but Tommy is a phenomenal guitar player. Oh, Why, what, you, you comment on his... I, he is an awesome guitar player and an awesome he performer. He is fucking incredible. Oh, thanks, man. I think you said it. Yeah. All, there, all there is to say. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot I of remember, words. I, I watched... Explain. Well, I remember him as a young... And he, he was a slightly older than me, but... Uh, you know, as very young, he was fantastic. Even when he was, you know, yeah, in those yeah, early days, yeah. and today, obviously, he's phenomenal. He can still do it. Don't think he can. Oh, he can do it a lot better. I think even today. better. That's yes. nice. I'll right. tell you, the top of my game. I was watch. I watched the accused for years. You know, and fucking, they're great. And it wasn't until I got in the room with you, you know, when we were jamming mm-hmm. with us three, and I was this far apart from him, and he's showing me apart, and I'm and watching. I saw that right hand, you know, and I saw. These guys play so fucking hard and so effortlessly, though. That was what I'm, I'm tripping on Josh up there, <clears throat> flailing these things. And it, he's, he's just effortlessly. And Tom does the same way. But then you look, he's playing hard like James Hetfield, fucking hard. You know, they, yeah, that's what I compare to James Hetfield. The right hand of James Hetfield is, is the only pretty, person that I think has got like that same. Delicious. Yeah. I've even read that in uh, old reviews. Tommy and, compared to James Hetfield. Yeah, I did a couple times. And the, the the stage performance, basically from all the guys, was I mean they're playing their skill, but they're also their stage performance oh, flying was, uh, in the air. Yeah, yeah it yeah, reminds almost... me of uh, Zeke came out later, and they also have a sensational stage performance. Yeah, yeah and they did at that one point. That's mm-hmm. yeah. kind of the same thing as as the accused. Yeah, they no, they this were period with people. That's the best period. I, I hadn't seen another yeah, you gotta move around. local band. Moving like mm-hmm. that, you know, other than the cues, and then you know until Zeke came around and. But uh, they don't move. No, you gotta have just two guys moving. There's yeah. only just two guys moving. Yeah, on each side of the stage. Yeah, or something. Yeah, any everybody because well, somebody needs to keep. Well, your your singer has you know? to be moving. Yeah, and you've and got to the have, bass player, the guitar player needs to be hopping. They, ha- they have but to not be both. You don't playing have to both, off. Yeah, it's almost like a circus. Yeah, but they're just popping you know, around yeah, like popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Right. next level though, because you see these pictures now from back in the day, and all four of you guys, even the drummer, right? No, that's like you know, yeah, that's a little. That's that. points off. We at, no, at the end of the right. show, we started deducting points. Yeah. You know, you get less money for if you synchronize hopping at this point. But so then, let's bring this up. Here's a good question: Who, who, who is one of the first people that? That started this jumping, because that was Pete a, Townsend. Also, was it Pete Townsend? Was Pete yeah, Townsend. but he's a child molester. Well, okay. yeah, I know. Well, got, well, they're not many. Yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Not, not while he's on stage. Yeah, not while he's on stage. Yeah. 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 And I, I was always a fan of the Who, but I liked I liked Keith Moon and John Entwistle. So I didn't like the Who or Townsend. Who, so. What other were there other hardcore bands that did the jumping? Well, Henry Rollins, DOA, Randy Rampage, DOA. Yeah, and Henry Henry did some jumping. Henry Rollins. Yeah, but he doesn't have a guitar, so it doesn't. You know, no, makes yeah, okay, yeah. yeah but we're talking. Yeah, we're, yeah, no, yeah, I'm not trying to say that the Cube is <laughs> the first one to do this jumping, but I do say that it was real prominent in the photos yeah. of the jumping. No, to, they're all airborne. With the yeah. guitar, well, Eddie Van Halen. I think really? he, for, yeah, he jumped. He did do because Bad Brains were a jumping band, but not Doctor No. Oh, you know, Bad right. Guitar player, right? You know, I want to. I'm trying to remember who Chewy was like. Was Ar- 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 some jumping? Right? They did, yeah, but that was. But that was mostly yeah. the drugs, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I think it was. I want to say Randy Rampage was the one that got that got Chewy all psyched on that. So Chewy was the one pushing. We got to jump. Oh no, he just did it. He couldn't oh, stop. See. Yeah, you see old videos yeah. from '83, and he's Chewy. Okay. So you guys just started doing it. Everyone just started doing it because it was going on. It just that's what. Yeah, you had you just certain parts. That Chewy, you, Chewy you was hopping. To do it. Yeah. Chewy was hopping <laughs> off <laughs> amplifiers. Chewy yeah. was hopping off anything he could get on, and yeah. he would go on. He would hop into the audience. Yeah. I would say it was one of my reason. favorite yeah. things about the band was the jumping. Honestly, yeah. I and I, I when we remember we were we did that big thing at uh, down in Ballard at the we, for Hard and Heavy. They filmed it, but then oh, yeah, 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 and yeah, we were yeah. doing like fake jumping because yeah, there was no crowd, right? Yeah. There was no crowd, and there was no right. we didn't have to play, so they're like jump, and we're like I am jumping on the drum set. <laughs> right, it looked oh, like a circus. Okay. Was, was, these these were, were setup circus-y. photos. Yeah, yeah, those were staged. Yeah, and you know, Blaine um, was usually up four or five feet. The only one oh, yeah. jumping, was, yeah. was the drummer. Right, no, <laughs> yeah, Blaine, caught, Blaine caught lots and lots of air back in the day. Yes, yeah, yeah. and uh, surprisingly, yeah. he still catches air, and which is okay. So, how much air can he get? Uh, you get as much as you want, that. it's still free. So. Mm-hmm, yeah, it's free. Okay, so you joined the band, okay? 1990-ish. 1990-ish. And um, 
did at this point do you think you have a ownership interest in the band or you just no we, at that point i think that it was it wasn't as those guys had been they're a band they were an established band right. so they came to me blaine basically said we're gonna give you 19 percent and neil sussman yeah he gave you a figure a number figure? yeah and I, I, that, I had a contract where did you come up with 19 percent? that's why i didn't i did not know this yeah he said you get 19 percent and uh and i had a little yeah, contract with him yeah and, and you brought up my neil attorney neil sussman neil yeah. sussman wrote that uh hi neil and uh oh. And it was not, and then 19% cut. Weird. I never knew you Yeah, did. I didn't get an equal cut. That's why when I, I when I joined Tad, I asked them for 25% up front. <laughs> well, well see, I just thought it was fair because at that point I was established. Too. And, and once again, as these guys pointed out, punk rockers don't get into that stuff. No, was no see, by this time we weren't punk rockers. By this time no, we you were, were a professional all touring band. Yeah. Over 20. We've been on some tours. The loud albums are coming out. We're, we're learning about publishing. We're learning about these things or whatever. We still don't know anything about it. But we're starting you know. to realize that m- music and entertainment is a is a business. At this well, point, it has. You know. to, in order to keep going, you have to look at it that way. Right. You don't necessarily have to make money, but you do have to look at it as a business. Mm-hmm. And you got to break even at the very least, or you're done. You know, unless you, have you just can't keep pockets, yeah, pop, mm-hmm. pumping money and going to work if you want to go on tour. You know, so okay. So now we come to the trademark. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and we're going to bring the trademark you sent us, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, up to up on I'm screen. Get it out of the car. Oh no, no, we have we have the image oh, okay, you right. sent us. Oh, okay. just, We'll just load that up called editing. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right, okay. So, okay. Okay. Magic of editing. It's going to be right here, Josh. You got to. Yeah. So when did you start the trademark process or when did. Um, uh, when was the first time? 2005. I think it was 2000. Okay. 2005. So, I think okay. I got it in 2007. Or okay. Like All right. So. It, t- it took like two years to to mature or to for the process to to uh, take place and to be approved. Okay, so uh, this trademark that we're bringing up on screen is mm-hmm. 2019. Okay, yes. Is it, is it like an annual renewal or no. is it just an update? The, the first one, I I didn't uh, I, I didn't file timely enough at, on the seven year mark, I believe it is. Okay. Um, I, there's certain paperwork that you're supposed to file after, or maybe it's four years, four or seven. Um, you're supposed to file certain paperwork um, at that time with the uh, patent office and tr- patent and trademark office in DC. And I failed to do that on the first one. And so it was, uh, it went, you know, dead, it died or whatever. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't realize that for a while um, that it kind of wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, active. It wasn't active. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't live. Um, so then I just reapplied. Okay. Yeah. When I realized that. Um, so um, that's why it's not, it got a later date on. Yeah, and it came back quicker to me too because I was the you know the first guy who did it first time. The first one took a little longer because they were researching it, making sure I was who I said I was, and I, you know, I had, one of the questions is when did you first use this name, the band name in com in the act of commerce, and that you know. I, and it wants a date and a specific thing that you did to, to and I said, 19, that, 19, I just used 1983. Because that's when your first show. Yeah, the first actual album came out. Oh, I, mean, I, I could have said 1981, one, you know, because we got paid five So you went off the accused rejector. Yeah, I just okay. used that as a general, you know. So I said, and that was, then I had a copy of the album that I was able to, to scan and show them in the inside label and everything said 83 and my name on it and all that stuff. So I was able to prove that I was who I said I was and that I was first, to use it in commerce, essentially, that was applying for a trademark. So they do all that stuff and go through all the research and verify that all that you're put on your form is true. And uh, then, uh, yeah, then it gets approved at that point. Okay. Now, uh, what what year was the GBH tour where you got injured? 87. And I, I didn't get injured, uh, David. I was going to correct you on that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. it's uh, I, got, I was sick. I, got, I caught something like a virus of some sort. I had a 104 temperature... I was covered in spots. It, it was the, the doctor didn't know. It said it looked like malaria. Oh, it sounds like syphilis. Yeah, it could have been syphilis. I was doing more drinking than I was fucking on that tour. But uh, it was uh, it was really bad, and I was really really sick, and so I had to be flown home. Did you ever find out it wasn't syphilis? I don't believe it was syphilis. No. It was it malaria? Did you ever find out what it was? I did not. Okay. No, they gave me some kind of antibiotics and stuff when I got to yeah. Seattle, and uh, it was just you know 
it ran its course. Okay. And so... But there was six shows left on that tour. On and the they, yeah, they continued that with, with yeah. your permission. And Well, I... Who you know, played guitar? Uh, the GBH guy. They, they switched, oh, Jocko? I think they yeah, switched around. They had like musical chairs and played a bunch of... Yeah, like, I think there was... But it was... They, they played a bunch of punk rock songs. They didn't do the accused set that I was oh. playing. They didn't oh. play those songs. They did covers and stuff yeah. with Jocko? Yeah. Cool. Like and I, I believe song somebody in, I think it was the drummer, of G, or somebody got injured in GBH yeah. too. So it wasn't Ross the drummer, did. Ross Alex. Did. Alex then started playing with GBH. Right? Yeah, the bass player Ross, he tripped over a, a chain that was in a dark parking lot. They were running through a parking lot like a bunch of children and one night, which is what we all did. They were on so, the lamb. Yeah, we were, yeah, we were running around. And he didn't see this chain across this these two posts in this parking lot. One of those, don't come, don't bring your car into this parking lot yeah. chain. And he fucking tumbled over it. Yeah, yeah, hard. And broke his elbow or something. Ooh. Yeah, and so uh, Alex filled in for GB, uh, Ross in, in GBH for several shows, which was kind of exciting to see, you know, our guy up there, with our heroes, GBH. You know, that was really cool. Oh, GBH. He did a great job. Such a great Not that Ross isn't a great bass player. On, of course, he's the bass player. But uh, it was it was it was cool. Okay, so obviously they had your permission for all that. Yeah, now I had no choice. Really. Next comes up a European tour as the accused, mm -hmm. which you were aware of ahead of time. Oh uh, no, no no! Well, I like, mean that wasn't that's... the next thing that happened. Well, what, so so the next so I mean there was a lot of tours and stuff in between that. Okay, you know. Um, so wait a minute, wait a minute. But you know, well, you said something. You don't have to give them permission to do that, do you? What, to keep going on the tour? Right. No, the tour yeah, was, was booked. Unspoken that, that yeah, no, I'm not. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, they could have said, okay, Tom's gone. But would you have said, I don't want you guys to do this or, or even consider No, I wouldn't have said, don't play. No, don't don't go on without right. Because you're not, you're, right. not, you're not thinking the band is your band. No. Even like right now, you're not saying, it's just, this is a matter of. Right. Okay. Okay, That's so all. I just I'm okay. just quick. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So between, between GBH, uh -huh. the ending of that tour, mm hmm and when Blaine and Alex toured Europe mm -hmm. with without me, yeah, what oh, happened? Jesus, that was a lot. Between. That's a five year. Period. Yeah, that's five that's years. A five year period. Yeah, that was okay. a pack, a so you you were still in the band. They all of you guys were still in the band together, or did yeah. Alex or Blaine depart, or anybody? No, no. All, I mean, we got Devin. You know, Devin came in on drums after Josh, and we we recorded the Splatter Rock album uh, for Nasty Mix, which yeah. was nineteen ninety three. Okay, so so another five years went. Yeah, and then comes a European tour under the name Accused, um, and Blaine and Alex and two other guys were on that. Why were you not on that tour, and were you aware of that tour? I don't. I don't recall the tour being pending. Like you know, we're going to go on tour. I remember there being talk of a of a European tour at that time, but I was. I had been. Practicing and, and maybe even performing in Grunt Truck for maybe a year prior to that. Often the same night as the accused practice. So I would do accused practice, pack up my shit and go do Grunt, grunt truck, truck practice all night. And, you know, three or four times a week. And uh, it was just getting, you know, the time was was pretty much done for, I think we were recording the Splatter Rock album um, up at Music Source or mixing it at Music Source or something like that. And uh, it was just obvious to me that it was it had run its course. Nasty Mix had gotten bought out by a, uh, Ichiban Records, which was a primarily jazz label. And uh, we had a meeting with those new people at Ichiban, and we could, I at least I could tell that they really didn't know what to do with the accused or want to deal with the accused. Um, yeah, it was for punk rock. Yeah, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah. They really didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They weren't excited about it. Uh, they were not enthused about it. And I was like, yikes, because we had, you know, it was hard to, hard enough for us to get the nasty mix deal, you know, at at back then. So now to be kind of tossed over like a, a bastard stepchild to Ichiban, who doesn't really want you, I was, you know, I was like, this is kind of this is gross. This almost feels like we're just, you know, existing. You know, now, I mean, I don't think we should seek something else or whatever. It, well, there was a, it, I, I will say that in the meetings that we went to, one that one grinning came out when they had Glenn Boyd and the, oh, you were, mean Nasty Mix meetings? Yeah, yeah, Nasty Mix meetings where Glenn Boyd and they had this girl, that, that one, yeah, the hot, like flirty one, yeah, the, yeah. the secretary. That was wasn't it. Ed. No, she was, there was, there was, there was like three people or four people um, who were 
They were in, like, especially mostly. Oh, Glenn you mean Boyd. Sandy? Sandy Gardner? Maybe. Okay. Glenn, Glenn Boyd was a like really good but guy. But yeah. there were meetings and they knew what to do. They were talking about what we're going to, what magazines we're going to Yeah, put marketing the campaigns in, and things like that. They were all like totally, they knew what to do with the band. That mm-hmm. first album, they knew. Yeah, was and then that, they, was so that on, he's, it's like they didn't have those meetings or whatever. Right. I wasn't there, but. but yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Well, Glenn Boyd is the, uh, he's the, Resident Seattle rap expert. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, him and a guy named Nova Kane, one, two, three. Mm-hmm. That, you know, these two guys know everything about rap and Nasty Mix. For those who don't know, it was a small label that signed Sir Mix a lot and brought Sir Mix a lot out. And that he actually was hit. It was his label. Yeah, he, oh, it was. Yeah, okay. he part of it. I thought it was with, with, with Ed Locke. With, and Nasty, I think Nasty Ness was involved originally. Yeah, uh, yeah, Ness was. Nasty Ness was, yeah. was a Seattle DJ. Yeah. Um, so those guys all kind of. Yeah, and was the new it was kind of shocking to all of us in the scene that the Q's signed to this rap label. Yeah. We were so well, you should have seen the parties at uh, the the label parties. Yeah, it would just be like it, it just looked like you know uh, it, it, we, were, we, guns were, we were sticking out, <laughs> we were sticking out like a sore thumb in our little table. Let's just say it that. Yeah, it was like it was pretty. Oh well, nice. um, uh, what's the what's the uh, you know the the music channel? Um, uh, uh, oh, bomb shelter TV. No, no, uh, the the black one. Um, um, oh, BET. Yeah, they were there. Um, filming and oh, stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they were there at some of these parties, you know, these dinner parties and stuff that we had at like a Space Needle and shit. You know, that was fun. Everybody's all blinging and stuff. You yeah, know? and we come in with our jeans and stuff, and uh, all these hoopties going around. You know, they're pulling oh, up. Yeah, boom, yeah. And, yeah. Like, and the BET uh, people did try to interview us one time. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I was stoked. Well, because you know, uh, uh, Def Jam was doing what they were doing. You know, with like. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, rap and metal. Right, they were doing rap and metal, oh, and yeah. that's what I do. I do rap metal. Yeah, it was a natural pop. progression. So, so it's as, the, as the fan, you get the promo shot. It had the extra guy in the photo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Holding the gun. Yeah, Donald the Brown. Cookie, yeah. Donald Brown. Brown. Yeah, <laughs> that's Wayne's friend, Mr. Stubbs. Yeah, yeah, he's still oh, around. Yeah. yeah, we get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him up at uh, Bent Bike not too long ago, a couple and, years ago, and down and out. You know, the so it's like, oh, are they are they doing raps? Oh, peacetime pop. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you guys. It fit. It was a fit. You know, Where did you find those it? guys? The Mad Poet and the other guy? Well, when I worked at Easy Street. Oh, okay. Yeah, they came in do, uh, sell, selling their demo demo tape cassette. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, wow. Easy Street just... is a famous, uh, it actually started in Bellevue, I believe, but it's yeah. a famous uh, Seattle record company now located in West Seattle. Yep. Record that sur- store. That survived all mm-hmm. the all the onslaught of all the various musical, you know, yeah. things. They're still a record store and they're still killer. With physical product yep. inside of it. Vinyl records. And what isn't there the something best. going on there Sunday? In fact, next Sunday is the Grunt Truck Record release party for right. the reissue of the Push LP. Which the double, is double a 1500 12. copy limited edition. I think it's 25. 25, okay. And that's on Rhino, right? Rhino Universal. Rhino Records. Mm-hmm. We're that's gonna... weird because, you know, that's, that's who they're talking to. Uh, Tad is re-releasing Inhaler. And they're mm-hmm. talking to Rhino. There's a guy at Rhino that, that likes he's certain going kinds of shit. Up stuff. Yeah, yeah. He likes good, good, yeah, shit from that era. Yeah. So he's snapping it up. They're up talking about it. advances and stuff. They're like, we need your address. You're going to get a fucking car, dude. I'm, I want a car. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so they're talking Cadillac yeah. Escalade. Yeah, yeah, you bet. Blink, 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 blink. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anyway, we veered off. The, yeah. yeah. And, you know, as long as we veered off, yeah. I want to stay on Grunt Truck for a minute because okay. I had the questions later, but we mm-hmm. kind of touched on them. Yep. So you run truck 1986, did you say? Or 89. 89. That's okay. about when I first yeah hooked up with those guys. Yeah, Scott and Ben. 89? Scott McCollum and Ben, yeah. Scott lived down in the basement of his house I lived at. For those for those unfamiliar with Grunt Truck, just go to YouTube and Google Grunt Truck and watch some of these spectacular videos. Okay. Now they're spectacular. <laughs> yeah. they, they're phenomenal. They're, 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 they, I mean, you would agree. Yeah, Those videos are pretty damn yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. The tribe one, we're not so happy with tribe is kind of weird. But didn't that one get on Beavis and Butthead? No, no. The crazy love did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Crazy Derek, love yeah. got on Beavis, Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Yeah. That was That's killer. probably the yeah, highlight of your life. That was awesome. Yeah. That that was was awesome. I was sitting in my girlfriend's house and there we were on MTV. Beavis and Butthead. We had no idea we were going to be on there. Oh, okay. I really enjoyed that show. I was like, what the fuck? 
Yeah. I was looking at the TV. I'm like, holy okay. fuck. And they liked it. They were like, hey. I was like, oh, thank God. And they're like, fuck. Because they really God, was, on people sometimes. Yeah, because you got to wait like 30 seconds in before they decide if they like it or not. And I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So like, at some point in time, <laughs> yeah, you guys had a, there was a fallout between yeah, right. uh, Alex and you and mm-hmm. Blaine and you. Yeah. And I, I but, just, but before we get there, yeah. now, Josh was in Grunt Truck. Mm-hmm. And so was uh, Alex. Briefly, yeah. When briefly. did they? When were they in it? Boy, you, you, that timeline, I you don't. Josh, I don't do you remember recall. when you were I in can tell you. Yeah, I, Alex. Uh, so, so uh, after I left the accused, I joined Tad. Not too far after, you know, six months maybe later, and then I started going and doing all this tour circuit and stuff. And he was doing. Tom was in grunt truck, so I was running into Tom in L.A. and different states, states. and different countries all the time with him doing it, it would be always like hey yeah passing by hey, wait, wait. like conventions in uh, right. la and stuff and uh everyone's just having a good time and uh what was the question and when did you what, what, i'm just wondering because i like talking about the fun i'm, I'm wondering yeah. <laughs> when you and you and alex both became members oh of alex was before me so alex was before you yeah i remember he got in there and i was still in tad and, and alex was in grunt truck because i was trying to get the, us to do some shows tad and grunt truck maybe even a tour but it just it wasn't to be, and then, uh, uh, and then I, after I left Tad around ninety six or seven, um, I uh, we did some accused stuff. I came down to Crown Studios, which Alex was managing and running this rehearsal place down in West Yow, and uh, and I said, you know, hey, blah blah blah, and uh, is that when we played Linwood? No, we, yeah, we played Linwood, and then we played the Rock Candy. We played, so we played yeah, the Riviera right. and the Rock Candy, and Ooh, Lori, the favorite mm-hmm. bookie shows for us. Two and good then, old clubs. Yeah. yeah, and they were just packed. And that was the last, that's the show that the famous pictures of my brother were mm-hmm. uh, yeah. taken on. Singing, singing Corpse Walks. Yeah. yeah, and then so that would be Jason Cinder. And, uh, not Snyder. No, nope, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Always to be confused. Mm-hmm. So we did those two shows, and it was just, it was just to be kind of for fun. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember when I asked Blaine if he wanted to do it, and everyone was into it, but Blaine was like, "Well, I'm not going to fucking manage it. I already did that." He goes, "You can, you know, book it and deal with all." Of it. And so I, I did, you know, just I booked a couple of shows. Didn't he give you the box too? There was like a box of papers and stuff. Oh no, no, I don't no, think so. He didn't give you the box. No, but he and he, nobody was sure what we were doing, whether we were, you know, I, and I, all I remember is we did two shows. That, that's the accused. It yeah, was, as the accused, and we played those shows. And Blaine was on those shows. Yep. Okay. And, it was and Rock was, Candy. Okay. And they were cool, good shows. Yeah, I think cool. I was at the Rock Candy one. So Yeah, and and and, and then, uh, so through that, I was kind of reconnected with Tom. And so I would be running into him all the time. And then I, uh, something happened, and... and Oh, I was just having a conversation with them, and they said that they that you know they had a problem, and they don't have a drummer now. So, oh, grunt truck. Yeah, and he was he was thinking I was busy doing something. Else. We, did we, were. Lemon, we did the lemons tour right away then, right? Yeah, the no, West, not right away. Oh no, like no, West Coast. But right? Alex was in the band already, you know, because he had been in there. And then I and then I said, well, I'll try, you know, I'll I'll, I'll sit in there and, and see if we can do something. And I'll help, and I love you know. Jim and oh, him. we did Mo's probably. Yeah, and then we did a couple of shows, and then we did this, then we did a shot EP. We did actually did a couple of different. Oh, that's right. Jesus! I forgot about that. Well, we, oh, we opened for Scorpions. Yeah, oh, we went up to we drove up. Wow, to, yeah, oh, these Scorpions. Yeah, Alice Cooper yeah, and the Scorpions. Alice Not Cooper. just Scorpions. Oh, Alice Cooper too. That's yes. a gorge, man. Oh, oh. at the gorge. Alice. Cooper. Yeah, I think I've seen pictures of Tommy with the snake around him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're back there awesome. looking at the Scorpions off all their guitars with diamond crusted headstocks on yeah. every little. We guitar. have video of that. Yeah, I took my video camera back. Well, those are the oh. diamonds. Michael Schenkner wasn't there then. No, was he? no. You know what that down. diamond on the headstock is for? No, the laser beam to fuck for the show, oh, dude. Oh, okay. the rock show. Yep. Well, I, I got it. Like I said, I like pop metal, and I thought the Scorpions were fabulous. Oh, okay. Best, okay. So that's one of the best pop metal fans ever. All right. Now I'm clear with what you think pop metal is. And there's no way Scorpions is pop metal. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's heavy metal. Yeah. It's Michael so Schenkner? Michael Schenkner was great. See the woman? He's a man? <laughs> what the fuck? The, no, that was really rough uh, played on that. Oh, yeah, okay, so. So, is Uli Roth pop metal? No, I wouldn't say so. 
They? More like gypsy metal or something. Yeah, gypsy metal. That's the exact word I was going to use. <laughs> Time frame is crazy. That's not trademark. Oh. You can feel free. <laughs> Hi-yo! I Although I think I had a band, Gypsy Rose, on the yes, yeah, yeah, yes, you did. Speaking of yeah. which, yeah. yes, you did. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, so let's. When did the falling out? So Alex went on to play with you guys. When did you and Alex have a falling out, or when did? I don't know. Depends okay. on what you call a falling out. I don't, I don't um, just not not working together again. Uh, he was. I'll tell you some. I'll tell you something that can fill in a little bit. Not to do with his answer. But to do with what you're asking for, it's a timeline. there's a little more timeline stuff too. Yeah, yeah. like he, there was a, other couple bands before in between Grunt Truck and and like oh the right. Hot Rod Remember, Lunatics, right. Lie, Hot Rod and, Lunatics, and, Lie, uh, um, Hellcat, Hellcat was one I was gonna say. Yeah, that's right. See, there was and then yeah, and then now you and Alex were both in Hot Rod Lunatics. Yeah, and that was right after uh, <laughs> after Hellcat, which is a band they had. They did mm-hmm. a couple shows, which was a really cool. Band. Alex and I were in that band together with Chris yeah, Hellcat. And I saw yeah. that's a good band. Yes. I and think who was the singer? Zach Brandis. I saw them at that King Cat Theater down. Did yeah, you play I there? So. I think so. Okay, yeah, I saw yeah. Hellcat at the King Bramus Cat. was the singer? Yeah, Jeff Bramus. Yeah, he sang that was for a, a while. Good I band. sang for a while, but Jeff, yeah, when Jeff Bramus was in, it was great. Now, five piece. That's pretty badass. Yeah. yeah. Rock and roll. Yeah, and see, so so he was, th- th- you were still doing stuff with Alex. Mm-hmm. And then and then I started playing with Alex. And uh, that, that by that time, Grunt Truck had stopped, hadn't it? Because we had done the, oh. we had done the. Lemons? The Lemons tour. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, things we, were dissolving, I think, at that point. Oh, yeah, that we were in the middle of all the legal bullshit. Right, and so everything was fine yeah. with everybody. Personally. But personally, and and I think, I, and I'm not speaking for you, but I, mm-hmm. Blaine wasn't around. Correct. But Alex was involved with it. So there was a period in time when Alex was kind of on, you know, not ever, I don't, I, I'm not speaking for anybody, but I don't think that uh, Alex was on, on, you know, playing with Tom in the grunt truck. And, and Hellcat. Think, and, and Hellcat. And I don't think, you know, there. I remember Blaine wasn't real happy when, because uh, when I was in The Accused, uh, when I first got it, the young little punk in there, they, that's when I started noticing problems that they had with Tom because they were telling me, you know, that, that they were having problems with him and whatever it was. I was like too new. And I, but, but in my newness, I was also going, well, I'm not really, you know, I'm nobody, but I don't think I'm really into this. If, 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 if they're not all, if it's all. looking like this guy isn't going to be into it. I really thought, you know, and I wasn't a fan of the accused when I joined the band. I didn't, I didn't know a lot about it. I'd heard of it and everything, but I didn't know much about it. So I was a good, unbiased, you know, like, oh, I know that guy, you're going to do it. I just thought, this guy seems like one of the most, you know, prominent things. And it's a reason for me. And so then I didn't get approached anymore about, you know, the problems with him because I didn't have a problem. I don't have a problem with anybody doing anything. As long as you can show up and, and do, do the job. job. There's going to be fights, you know? Oh, yeah. You've got to have fights, even baseball teams and football yeah. teams. So, yeah, I mean, right. there was, a, there was I saw, you know, real problems with Blaine and him in the beginning. I was never involved in it. I don't know what it was, but I, I know the Blaine. Okay. So, so there was some early on issues. Okay. So, I want to get it. I want to get back to this European tour and the, the trademark. So, mm-hmm. yeah. The European tour. Yeah went on and yeah. you were not in that band right um, they had andy andy massey came in and played guitar okay uh, were you all right with that european tour uh or was that an issue for you? i mean i thought it was lame i thought it was kind of stupid um did you express any? no i no okay. i just okay. was like really <clears throat> really you're doing that okay I, I i told andy how when he got back i saw him at the off ramp i said hey andy how was the fucking europe thing he was like, oh, it was fucking tough, man. Some of those nights, they really fucking wished you were there. And he goes, but after a while, it got okay. I was like, fuck, man, good job. And he goes, I hope you're not mad. And I said, fuck, no, dude, I would have taken the gig if I was you. You know, fuck, yeah, that was a great opportunity to go to Europe, you know, and fucking rock out, play good music. I said, hopefully those they treated you okay, those, you know, Blaine and Alex treated you okay, you know. Okay, and that's And so- uh, everything was cool, yeah. Now that was me and him, anyway. Okay. Me and Andy. So that tour was in the name of The Accused. Yeah, they used the accused when they were over there. And yeah. and, and you were despite all right. there being no original members in it. Yes, they did okay, that. Okay, and you were all right with that. Well, I I you wasn't had, all right with it, but I didn't contest it legally didn't or anything. Contest it. Okay. No, I was too busy doing other shit. Okay. Now, I believe it's 
shortly after, in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. they started Toe Tag? Uh, well, uh, we got back together and recorded Oh Martha. Okay. Um, which was around 2003 or, and four. I think we were, okay. it was when we started writing material for that and then finally recorded 2004, something like that. It came out in 2005. Yeah, because remember you called me and said, hey, we're going to put the... It was right, I tried to get him to drum, oh, yeah. yeah, and the reformed version of it that was that but we were trying Alex to... Alex and I had just basically had a, a falling out with Hot Rod Lunatics. Right. Okay. Okay. So that, that was, was my fault. That was He was out then, yeah. That was my fault. Okay, okay. so, so was got, that the last time you recorded with Blaine and Alex? We got Steve O-Ring. Nelson came back on drums and played on Oh Martha. And then we went down to San Francisco and did a couple shows with that version of that band, played Portland, San Francisco, and Berkeley or something like that, and came back up. And then that was... Roughly the, the last time. Okay, so that's yeah. the last no, time. Well, that's when those guys quit. Yeah, they quit in 2005. The three of them took off. Okay, and they yeah. formed Toe Tag. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, which? Well, they had already, apparently, according <laughs> to the Post, they had already formed Toe Tag while the accused was still the going action. out. Okay. Yeah, the, the Post that was on the message board, which is how I found out that they were quitting um, the, the band message board on our website, stated that they had been toe tag for several months before that statement was made i, I don't recall the actual okay, and then, the statement but yes and then toe tag is kind of a two-tiered band it's toe tag and the accused ab now toe tag was playing accused songs um uh, well, i don't know about that but okay, okay but yeah. when um at what point did um i think they became martha's revenge yeah, Martha's Revenge, the right, well, which I, I I heard about that through I think it was maybe you or somebody told me about them running around doing Martha calling it Martha's Revenge, playing a bunch of the Q songs. And I thought that was I said, you know what? That's a fucking really clever name for a for a band name to be doing that. I said I I approved of that wholeheartedly. I thought, gotcha. You know, that's a good little gotcha. Um, if I was on their side, I would have thought that was a yeah, that's a good little gotcha. Oh, he's going to hate this. Martha's Revenge. We're going to call it Martha's Revenge. He's going to hate this. I didn't hate it. I thought it was very clever. Very yeah, it clever. is. That's actually pretty cool. It's very clever. For a tribute band, you know. Okay. So you had no problem with Martha's Revenge. Hell no. No, I thought it was great. And uh, shortly thereafter, I believe it worked its way into the Accused AD. And then I was informed that they were calling it the Accused AD. And that's when you had a problem. Yes. Okay. And um, so... You have the 2019 um, trademark. Mm -hmm. Now, going well, back to... Filed the, for it in 2017, I believe. But Okay, going back yeah. to the 2005 or six mm -hmm. when you originally filed for it, mm -hmm. according to Blaine, you know, he, he gave you band funds to do it, and he put some out of his pocket as well. I don't... I don't so you don't, don't recall. Don't recall. Don't, what is it? What, the weird thing I can't picture is there, when do we ever have band funds? Not, not we, but it's just a joke. Okay. Well, right. There was no band account. There was no bank account, but yeah. Okay. And then, um, <clears throat> and then according to both Alex and Blaine, they thought they were getting an equal 25% share on the trademark. Hmm. Um, so you don't recall okay, any of that. Uh, well, the, there was a, a band agreement. A band, uh, yeah, let's go over this band agreement. Formal band agreement that I brought down to a, a rehearsal slash meeting, um, somewhere around the time we were doing the Oh Martha stuff. I don't know if it was before, probably right before we were recorded Oh Martha. Um, and I just brought it down, a little two page thing that I customized, got it off the internet. It's just a band, an internal band agreement, they call it. And I presented that at rehearsal or at a meeting one day and it was not accepted uh, well. It was, I handed everybody a copy and I just said, you guys might want to just go over this and make sure everything looks good. And I think we should sign this just so we're all on the same page, literally as well. So as what, tell me, well, I, I don't know this. And just essentially. What was in the agreement? It just essentially provided that we all had a stake in the, in the everything that had to do with the accused from then on out. Okay. You and know? nobody signed that or no. that, that fell on. Okay. Yeah. It literally was thrown on the floor. Okay. And, um, so, um, going back, so have you, you've ex expressed to them and I've seen, seen it on the mm -hmm. internet and it, it's a big saga. I don't know if it's international, but in Washington state, you know, there's a two, <laughs> saga there's, of Washington state. <laughs> there's two accused camps. There's Tommy's and then there's Blaine's. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of, 
So you expressed to them that you did not want them using the name accused AD. Right. And what was their response? Um, I I don't know that I I don't know that that's something I'm going to discuss here. Okay, well, you don't have to. Okay. No, that's, that's it. All right. Okay. Tommy takes the fifth. <laughs> I'm going to take the fifth on that. Yeah. <laughs> there ain't no sixth, though, Tommy. No, I, know. I may use that often, depending on what your questions are now. Come yeah, on. okay. All right. So um, now Blaine, you know, feels he went out of his way to separate it from the Qs by calling it the Qs AD, but you mm-hmm. feel that's too similar. Well, you know, Dave, I don't feel that that's too similar. What do you think? The... The law, the law, the trademark law, um, the intellectual property laws um, say that it's just too close. OK. You know, it's yeah. just too it's too deceptive. It's it's too it's too close to the original name, especially with former members of that band. Right. You know, and Martha's Revenge. Martha's Revenge would be perfectly fine. OK. Mm-hmm. And to answer your question, Josh, I'm supposed to uh, I'm totally neutral. I am a big fan of the Q's AD, as mm-hmm. Tommy knows. I'm a huge fan of the Q's mm-hmm. and everything Tommy does, but no, I, I'm remaining neutral. And, and you're doing a great job, by the way, Dan. And I'm too, letting too. I let Blaine and Alex <laughs> explain their side. I'm letting, and your crew letting you guys ex- you know explain your right. side, right. and the public can make. I fun. think it's good that you're good, that you're bringing it up, this out because this is why well, I think it has to story. be addressed because it's, a long it's damaging the history. It, it's gas that needs to be farted. Yeah, the the, the yeah. Accused, yeah. for sure. It's a bubble that needs to burst. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I would say you know the accused and the accused AD are pr- pretty historical. You know, especially the accused, and it is um, the feud, uh, which is a word that you know is probably not proper, but the disagreements. Are, in my opinion, are damaging to the historical nature of the accused, which is, you know, what I, I'm hoping to, to I mean. Mm-hmm. Well, right. you were, that's the intention of this. The, the, the yeah. accused. The accused. The legacy or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was a big part of in, initiating So, that, yeah, yeah, let's step forward to the return of Martha Splatterhead. Yeah. Okay. This record is considered, uh, and when I say considered, it's been voted as one of the 25 best thrash records of all time that's a pretty incredible accomplishment and um and and, yeah that's an honor and a half to be considered that yeah to be a part of the books that yeah yeah Yeah, you've seen them okay yeah yeah yeah, it's unbelievable yeah i I was actually in half price books and i found this book on thrash and i'm Mm -hmm. flipping flipping through it it's got the cover you know up there Mm -hmm. and uh yeah, it's it said not only one of the top twenty five you know thrash albums of all time, it also said one of the most influential and you know earliest thrash bands known. So, um, I mean, there's there's a history, and yeah, I, you know, uh, I've always really enjoyed Blaine, and I've always really enjoyed Tommy, and people do kind of look at you know look at both of them, and they they you know, and if. They have a good uh, a chemistry together. They have a fantastic chemistry, but, but, yeah. but not so good right. chemistry personally. Yeah. Okay, so now Blaine and um, uh, Alex, yeah, uh, you know, uh, have also said that they wrote wrote and contributed to a ton of the Q's songs, and they they say they're not getting their fair share. Is how, how do you respond to that? Um, that's that's something that. I would rather leave up to the lawyers. Okay. You know, or, yeah. And uh, and the lawyer won't be Sussman because he represent, no. has represented all of them. So. <laughs> no, that would be conflict of interest. If yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, too bad. Yeah. He's I mean, he, Sussman can be involved on their side. It, it, I don't know if they've got a uh, No, I don't. I, oh. I think Sussman, okay. Sussman's a fan of yours. Oh, okay. He's a fan of Blaine's. Okay. He's, he wouldn't. So there would be conflict of interest. Sussman. Yeah. Yeah. Sus- yeah. For those who don't know, no, I don't need a lawyer. I mean, I've got, yeah. I've got my guys, but yeah. I'm just saying, if if Blaine needed one, yeah, I don't know. And we've brought guy. his name up a couple times. For those who don't know, Neil Sussman is the premier entertainment attorney from Seattle. Uh, I think that's the best. We don't have many of them, no. but he but is. He, he likes to write a lot of zeros in his little spots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he doesn't put any digits in front of him. I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> you get a lot of zeros. Nothing. You get a, lot a whole of bunch of nothing. You know. Yeah. No, he's it's a like, fantastic yeah. negotiator, and he has protected so many Northwest fans. Except for Gunter. <laughs> oh, that's all. No, anyway. Yeah, we have, and this is more about the accused. Yes, so we'll, 
Yeah. We'll, we'll keep on the cues. Yes, yeah, please. Thank you. Okay. So now these guys are still performing regularly as the cues, AP, and all mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've seen and heard, but have you actually taken legal action against them? Um, I'm going to have to. I can't really discuss that. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry, David. I know that's okay. not a lot to go on. The, but, uh, yeah, we I, have to give you a sign. I know. Number five, I know. It's just, yeah, just certain things. This, no, no, that's totally this isn't fine. And, that, yeah. and, and things that are going to be taken in a courtroom it's or just, yeah, it's, uh, yeah with with low end lawyers are involved yeah you have to let the lawyers do the talking right. yeah okay um so where can you say where this is all at today right. um unfortunately it's where it is you know it seems like it's out of your control it is really out of my control it, it really is um it's just it's a it's a legal matter you know now and, uh, I, I don't see I, I, at this point, but I don't see it ending ending well for certain people. That's that's one of my questions. <laughs> was how how do you see this? But what does that mean ending well? Because right. really, it just it's, it only would not end well for somebody if they just had to stop doing what they want to do. Right. I would say it would be cool if everybody could just say what they want, and and you know. Because I can, I can tell, I can tell you. You I should want. say it. I want them to stop using the name "the accused" in any manner. Okay. You know any version of it. You know the accused purple, the accused AD, the accused nineteen seventy three. Can't use it. You can call it Martha's Revenge. Call it Toe Tag. Play all the old accused songs you want. I don't care. Fart songs, ten minute warning, whatever. Just you can't use the two words "the accused" in your band. I know there's other bands running around there doing that in the state. There's there's new new accused bands every three months or so. I go online and I check, and there's some kids in Nantucket have formed a little garage punk band and called it "the accused" for whatever reason. Didn't thought it was available or whatever. It's not. You know the trademark is not available. It hasn't been. You know for a long time. <clears throat> I mean, I could I could have I could have not applied for it. Let somebody else apply for it saw that they were applying for it and I, well, did you use it before 1983? Nah, see, now I, I did, you know, I, I used it in 83. So, so you don't have a problem with them using the, the, the songs no. and doing whatever they want. No. You just don't want them to use the name the accused. Right. To attach it's been whatever. misleading, you know, it's because I've seen that it's been misleading people. You know, there's, there's, you know, kids or fans or whatever in some state somewhere, Maryland, wherever, thinking they're going to see the accused and they're not, you know, that's, that's the whole reason behind trademark you know, law as well is to uh, hopefully keep the consumer from being confused. Okay. And that's not even blaming Alex doing that, you know, could, a lot of times it's promoters, you know, know promoters either knowingly that. or not, not knowingly, maybe forgetting to put on the AD on there, you know, making an emphasis on the AD part. From the fans perspective. I can, I can, it, it happens, and I would you know? definitely say the accused AD they, they definitely sound different than the accused. There's no that's question. That's what I've heard. Yeah. They're similar, but it's it's different. And I mean, the reason they're similar is because Blaine's vocal style, mm -hmm. at least for me, is always going to be synonymous with the name the accused. And well, know, yeah, they were supposedly they were a cover band when they started, and as Martha's Revenge, and then, uh, but a cover band doesn't put out a whole new album's worth of new material, and still, you know, what I mean? do you know whose idea it was to call the, their name? The accused AD who came up with that name, accused AD. I think I, I do not know, but I would guess Blaine and Alex. Well, there's I think there's isn't one of these metal bands called something AD? Oh yeah, around? yeah. Or Venom Incorporated. Right. Venom Incorporated. Oh, is it AD maybe? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's like uh one of those metal and bands. There, there's lots Crash of other bands, bands that have this same problem where they've split into two bands. Yeah. Right, yeah. It, it is it's, common. It is a common it's thing. becoming very common and it's right. a, it's becoming very common for these punk bands 30 years later to get back together mm, which yeah. i think is cool but mm -hmm. it is it is kind of shocking it would be nice it would be nice it would be nice but right. i don't think yeah you guys are never getting back together. i can't i mean i can't say never okay I, good, I, good. Well, it's, that's, it's not coming from this side yeah no i we're, 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 we'd be into it okay so um but those guys don't want to those guys don't want to do it they don't hate me and they, i don't know if they hate anybody but they, i don't think they want to I don't think they ever want to do it. I think With, Alex likes playing guitar too much. Yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. Alex uh, is a phenomenal guitar player and also a great bass player. Um, 
And uh, he mostly he he's the best always, fucking bass player there is. Yeah, yeah he always I'm played playing. bass. Like bass was with the cues. Did he play bass? Grunt Chuck was he bass or guitar? Bass. Alex bass. was the best bass player I ever played with um, to this day. There you go. That's saying a lot. Yeah, I mean when I see the cues, they D. He's a great guitar player, but he's but when you he's, play drums with a bass player that's good. I play with him. He's okay. Well, good. yeah, I have to agree with you. He's a pretty skilled musician. Um, you can, he doesn't. There's no. There's no missing the fucking anything. He's fucking slapping you. He's slapping the audience in the face the whole time. You know, just kicking your ass. Look at those videos, man. I love playing. With I him. I do look. I would videos, be so fun yes. if I could play with him on guitar and, and Alex on bass. That's the best fucking. Music okay, right so you guys, you, so you guys aren't saying never. You, yeah, so no. Okay, all right. I thought that door was closed, so no, I, I think that's a fa- fabulous. Because <clears throat> yeah, I, I would love to. I would love to see the you two and Tommy and Blaine That'd perform. Awesome. I mean, uh, Alex and Blaine perform. I think I think people would come. There's been outside <laughs> parties that have tried to that have offered that. Yeah, I'm one of those outside yeah. parties. <laughs> I've been pushing I, it for I, years, I so. Yeah. Um, and when I realized I wasn't going to get anywhere, yeah. you know, I wanted to do this and cool. see if we can get this well, out and open. And as a fan's that. fans' perspective, is like I don't. You want to see that that band together? I mean, it would be great, but it doesn't have to be either that band's together or there's two camps. That's what I don't like as a fan either. Oh right, no, they're, they're, yeah, right. Fans should be able to enjoy both band, right, both bands. And the old yeah. stuff, and right? The new band. There's right. room right. enough for everybody in Seattle, correct? And yeah, they even yeah. played the gig together. They want you know, yeah. like the PRI yeah. or something. Yeah, they played with the accused. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was great. You know, because it was Toe Tag. You know, it, it was right. really weird listening to because Bla- they played right before us, and it was weird listening to Blango. And next up is going to be the accused. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> I wish I didn't and go. And then he came one. out and saw me, and he goes, "Hey, aren't you the drummer from Tag?" Yeah. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> yeah. All right, so now the accused, mm-hmm. um, you, you're you still doing stuff with the, the yeah. accused. Mm-hmm. My understanding is you're there as a studio or a touring drummer anytime he needs. Well, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's the, what it is. I mean, sure, you could say. We'll give you 19%. 19%. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you are still part of the accused as or you're 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 well, part of well I don't know what's going on with the accused right now. It's not. It's really it, like so. For the record, it's. I don't think this is like we're not sitting here trying to plan an accused. accused right. Thing. Right. This is this interview is encompassing the past. Past. Mostly. Right. And right. it's like we're trying to forge this new thing. These guys need to stop because we're trying to do. I, it's nothing like that. There's a, there's something like right now. Tom and I are doing something. With 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 the singer from Paw, is know, that the Watts 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 No, no, that's oh. right. Yeah, Primitive Race. It's a no, oh, right. okay, yes. yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good shit. A uh, guy from Paw, the singer from Paw, Mark Hennessy. Yeah, and uh, and a, and a, a gentleman named uh, Chris Niker, K N I K E R, is on the bass, and he's he's tapped both uh, Josh and I now too. And it's good. It sounds. I mean, I think it sounds like. No, I'm looking forward to it. I it's, a, it's, it's a grunge band. It's real it's similar grunge to the grunge truck stuff. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any any fan of grunge truck might like this shit. And yeah. when you guys practice, these guys come in wearing Nikes, drinking Hennessy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> maybe, maybe. So no, nah, I, I, I that yeah. one I was aware of, and that one I'm really looking forward yeah, to. Yeah, it could be. It could be some um, shit. Yeah. And I know. So what do, you have to ask him what he's doing. Yeah. What, so. Right now. Um, I know, so, so I'm going to ask you guys some of the other mm-hmm. musical things you're doing. Mm-hmm. But in your vision, Tommy, yeah. what is the future of the accused? Well, I'm it's wide open. Wide open, yeah. but it's not done, right? No. 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 Okay. No. Okay. No. There's and, a lineup with him and John Dolan. Yeah, John Dolan is going to, yeah, John Dolan is, is going to be, we're going to record some stuff with, with him. him. Like I was saying, maybe redo some of the old stuff off of the Murder in Montana LP and the uh, split LP, re-record some, a couple of the hits off of there, but with Brian on good. Right, so yeah, my next so and my understanding, Brian's yeah. working with you as yeah. well. And, and Andy Carroll. I've Watch always been a big fan of Brian's, as he knows. Yeah, and, um, and John yeah. singing. And, yeah. and let's let's t- take a little side detour too. I'd like right. to talk about the accused art. Mm-hmm. Um, you've done pretty mm-hmm. much all of it, mm-hmm. except for this. Which well, is, and not all of it. No, that's that. Now that. Well, I'm grinning like, and then yeah. Yeah, I didn't do grinning. I didn't do grinning. I didn't do uh, hymns. I didn't do 
uh, Casey Angel did. What you, you've done? Stories? Yeah, I've done a bunch. A lot of tons, yeah, a lot tons, of the T-shirt yeah. stuff. I mean, and when I did the original Martha, so I originally put this out like this. It was actually supposed to be black and white, right? Yeah, yeah. I think and so. we got the blueprint back. Of, we didn't know anything about yeah, records. Yeah. Like wow. this looks good, but why is it blue? And they're like, oh, it's not blue. And we're like, well, that's how we want it. Yeah. So, so we did this, yeah. and then I knew the accused were going to take off, and I wanted to get. Uh, I hired a very professional artist to yeah. do kind of a tribute to uh, Tommy's art. Yeah, and that was amazing. When I first saw that, David, I was like, "Wow!" I mean, that's like seeing—I don't know, man. That's your, wow. that, Martha was my baby, you know. I mean, my creation from you know since yeah. the beginning, and to see her in that version, I, I just about cried, dude. That was like, "Wow!" And you know, uh, yeah, that, that cost that, me four thousand yeah, dollars, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, yeah. I knew. I, I knew I, there's nothing wrong with this cover. Yeah, that's I just I knew we had to yeah. bring it up a notch. And I, yeah, when I did this, the 80s. Yeah, in the 80s. Well, and everyone's vis big visual stuff. Right. Well, it's like overhauling. You know, when that movie, that show yeah. Overhaul, when you take your shitty car in and they really oh, fucking yeah. fix it up and yeah. tits it out. Right, right. That's what that was like, man. Yeah. It was like the reveal was like, right, because oh my it's God. Good. Because of the and blood, it's just excellent. I have yeah. also like, seen in magazines and, or other places, I've seen this rated as one of the 50 best album covers of all time. Well, that's so, pretty killer. Yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. I, I myself think outside of Iron Maiden, it is the best album cover. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty hard to touch that Iron Maiden. They were a huge influence, though. Or inspiration. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Martha's kind of like a, a, a spin off a female yeah, version of Eddie. Yeah. Yeah, com comical and satirical. Yes. No argument there. Yeah. yeah. And, and it was a great, great concept. Yeah, so. I think so. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah. the accused are not done. It's, you know, the pandemic and all that, you know, slowed no, a lot of things no down. No pandemic. Fuck that thing! Yeah, it's time for it to be over. <laughs> I mean, um, bless we, that thing. We promise we would not, we don't, all the lawyers can talk about the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bam! Bam, that's a bam. Well, the one thing I can say is I've done a bunch of these on the couch interviews with a mask on, and I'm very happy to. I bet. Yes, it's yeah. exciting to. Well, you can't see the smiles, no, expressions. I know. It's, it's like it's, it's this whole thing's horrible. You know, I feel sorry for people who, you know, deaf people who are reading lips uh, yeah, right. and they can't communicate anymore. <laughs> <It's horrible. laughs> Those yeah. poor bastards. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, they're very about that. How do you read lips with a bass? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now, prior to COVID, and you guys were about to take off, and I'll. Yeah. Um, you guys were about to do something with a band called Water Ghost. Oh, yeah, we were doing that. Mm -hmm. And that was you and Josh? Mm -hmm. And and Brian. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize Brian was part of that, mm -hmm. too. Okay. Well, Brian, why, why don't you tell us a bit about Water Ghost and what, what, what it was going to be? And is it it's still coming, right? Yeah, we, we just, we just, we play with it. You know, we get together and do things with it, you know, move it around a little, redecorate mm -hmm. it. Um, then we put got it a bunch away. of drum tracks right yeah. now. And, and guitar parts just change. It's like an ongoing kind of side project. Fun thing. thing. They're yeah, kind of a side I, project. I'm it's really like, heavy. It's like real, real heavy. And I would say it's a mixed, it's a thrash grunge band. We do real grungy, slow down stuff. It's real kind of like creepy. Mm -hmm. And then we do really, then we do some superpower speed yeah. shit. So yeah. no, I, I was really looking forward to it. And I did an interview with Tommy, I think about two years ago. Oh, and that's right. Yeah, we were yeah. talking Water yeah. Ghost. Yeah. And then well, the, I remember when you first yeah. saw him. That's and a cool picture yeah. of you with Zoli. And yeah, on the sidewalk there somewhere. There's a YouTube, there's some Water Ghost on YouTube. Uh, Tommy and I on Pig Records, we recently. Yes, we did. Yes. Why don't you tell us about this? Well, this is the, this, is, this is pretty historical. Yeah, this was. This was 80, the 83, the very busy year of 1983. We did this. Um, it's a recording of a show that we that the accused did. Uh, John Bellin on vocals, Dana on drums, Chewie on bass, me on guitar. We went out to Missoula, Montana, thanks to our friend and uh, pen pal of Chewie's uh, named Jeff Ament from Pearl Jam. You may re you may recognize the name. No, I've never uh, heard of him. He uh, he lived he lived in Missoula, and Chewie had been uh, a pen pal of his, which is when you write people back and forth and send tapes and. And let oh, he was tape trading with him. Tape trading, yeah, with Jeff. Deranged Diction. D who was in a band called Deranged God, Diction yeah. out of Missoula, Montana. Yes. And he was. And I said, did get to see Deranged Diction. Oh, yeah, they were great. Yeah, when they moved out here. Yeah, they yeah. were good. So he said, please come play Missoula because we're the only punk band out here and we need, you know, a, there's a small scene out here. We'd love to have you and the Rejectors come out. And so he booked a show for us at the local cowboy bar down there in Missoula in 1983. And that's where this recording is from. Now, was that, that your first show out of state? 
No, no. I think we had played. Oh yeah, you toured on the San Francisco, San Francisco. maybe Francisco. even Canada before that. Yeah, Victoria. But this, so this is it. it yeah, the historical document that was that night um, is this, and uh, Jeff was the promoter of the of the That's show. Some interesting tidbits. Yeah, that's a little trivia for you. And this this record, it's, it, it's it, raw. It, it, it recently came out. It, it is very raw. Um, Good stuff. But it, it documents. I did do the cover. I drew the cover, okay. which is uh, the artwork's great. I was actually thinking of getting the skateboard tattooed on my arm or somewhere. I, yeah. um, it's cool. either that or a Martha tattoo. Cause yeah. And the shirts you had made, David, are just phenomenal, yeah. those shirts. Yes. Those are um, fantastic. From pieces. the DNA Project over in Indonesia. Yeah, those guys um, do amazing. Look at that. I mean, that's a high quality. The, and they, uh, they're they going to be yeah. doing a grunt truck shirt as well. We're talking about that. That's right. And yes. um, get that art to you, yes. Um, yes, we're waiting on Tommy to get the art. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot. I would have. God damn you, Tommy! I, I forgot. You got to give me these. It's never a bad thing to constantly remind me. The uh, oh no, it's it's. Uh, I'm like you. We get so wrapped up in so yeah, many and things. I don't write shit down anymore. So yeah, exactly. Okay, I'll get it to you. All right, um, Josh. I, I want to go to Tad for a minute. Um, one of my favorite grunge bands, and um, can you just share a couple stories about Tad and? Um, I, I'm assuming most people watching this know who Tad is, but tell them who Tad is in, in case they don't. And tell us, I mean, Tad was a phenomenal band and sold a lot, a lot of records. I don't know. Um, oh, I know. They sold a lot of records. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, Tad was, Tad is a, uh, is a, what's his last name? Doyle. Thank Thomas you. A. Doyle. Thank you. He currently owns a recording studio in, I think it's in Olympia? Uh, nope, he's in uh, he's in uh, Skyway. Skyway, okay. Skyway Renton. Really nice guy, too. Yeah, which eight, uh, is it which, no, it's uh, something which. Yeah, I was, yeah, and I was briefly talking to him about putting his wife's band on my label, but it never came to be, but, oh. but yeah, so how long did you play with Tad? Um, I got into the girl that uh, that I was that was uh, that, that I knew I knew this girl who knew Susan Silver and she told me that I, I used to work for Susan. Yeah, so. she she told me you should uh, send your demo tape to Susan Silver and um, blah 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 blah. See what see where that gets you. So I did. I went and I called up Jack and Nino and I recorded this little demo and and then I took it, the cassette down to Susan. With a little bio, you know, and uh, and then it wasn't a couple months later or whatever, a month later, I got a call from Kurt Danison, the bass player from Tad, that she gave my number, and then I went and tried out, and they gave me the job. Was Susan managing Tad? I replaced Ray Washam, the drummer from Scratch Acid. Phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, like one of the best drummers. Rabbit ever. Cat oh, Records. so I got the job over you, and he came, a couple of times he came in while we were recording, and, and Kurt said, he goes, he's our old drummer, and there's our new drummer. And he was like, just, he would say funny stuff like that. And I'd be like, uh, is that awkward? <laughs> is that awkward? <laughs> we were actually recording the Salem EP, and he showed up to that, and that was at that House of Leisure. Mm -hmm. That was a great oh, place. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then that burned down with the, what, Maltop. Someone threw a Maltop in yeah. the back yeah. window yeah. in the alley. <laughs> yeah, they That's where they really recorded Push, isn't it? Yeah. 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 No, no, we, we mixed. I don't know. You did something there. Something there, yeah. Because it was all people. it was all his stuff. What's his name? Gary King. Gary King. Mm -hmm. yeah, King. You were Gary King, right? Yeah. Yeah. That was the first recording I did with Tad was was uh, we did actually a, a, we it was a Puss Head artwork cover of Tad as a Dracula and it was uh, at this electric eel studios. I don't know if you ever knew that place. Just did some weird stuff, all these eight track and things and so I got in there through Susan Silver. Uh, what was so was Susan managing Tad? Nope. Oh, okay. No, but she was she was offering you know help to the band, and then she got us a manager that ended up ripping us off. That was working out of her office. He stole all of our money for like one year. At the end of the year, we had no money. It was Christmas. It was so he's a multi billionaire. His now. name is Perry Feigenbaum, and he stole oh, a bunch of money from us. And it was really <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. And I I can't get into the details of it, but anyway, uh, um. Tad was great. And they all loved to accuse me. Tried to play shows with the grunt truck. We never did one grunt truck show. We didn't do. Uh, Not do pan the ground or that uh, the, the mural amplitude. No, I was no. just there. Oh, okay. just. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we brought out a baseball card with, or I guess they're rock cards, but oh, that's with right. Blaine and that. Oh, Alex. you got grunt truck ones too, don't you? Yeah, 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 well, yeah. We, we showed the grunt truck one when we were interviewing Alex. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the accused one has Andy on it, I think, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I asked him about that because yeah. I'm like, that's who cool. are these people? Well, at least Andy got a card, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, <laughs> so, so, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, this is that. you, right? Oh, wow. Well, so we got the second one. generation. I've mean, I got another card, and we're sitting on a bench in Pioneer Square. Oh, oh a different series. Yeah, different series. Oh, you don't have this one? Is it the no. gold parallel? Well, you're lucky. I think I have two of these. <laughs> so. yeah, the I'll let you yeah, that's me. Thing for that. that was the bomb shelter video, Frank. Yeah, yeah Frank, dude. So, we, yeah. Then we went and toured with Soundgarden, and we got... We got kicked off the Nirvana tour because Tad said that Courtney Love was a bitch and Melody Maker. We had the In Utero tour, yeah, all yeah, shows. A fact is a fact. It's it's in true. Utero, all shows. And and so I was like, at that point, I was like, no. And I was just a drummer, but I was feeling lucky, you know. And I was just like, and then and they, I mean, we were driving around, you know, at parties, and the radio would come on and it would say Nirvana and the Coliseum with Tad and. You know, and then the big uh, monster truck voice. Yeah, right, right. You so know, what was driving down the road just going. <laughs> 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 yeah, so sound you, who was? Right, right. Soundgarden yeah, Nirvana. Nirvana. What was the biggest audience you played in front of? Uh, the biggest audience I played was definitely, uh, uh, what do you call that uh, in Milwaukee? Summerfest. Summerfest. And how many would I you I think guess? it was 30,000. Wow. Something like that. One of those stadium things where it's 20 feet between you and the first That must row feel people. great. I, that was the, that was the most un, not pleasing. It's hard to rock three thousand really people. Is. And yeah, I was way in back here, room. and Tad was way up there, yeah, okay. and it was so like, was everyone, odd. Yeah, yeah, you don't rock very hard. All of a sudden, you shows. have all that stage to fill, and you have yeah. no fucking show to go. Yeah. No lights to distract. You know, five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Five thousand's great. I'll, I'll, I'll say, say, I'll say I'll a little. Yeah, a little mini theater. Yeah, still feel the right. Since we're talking about great shows, I'm going to tell you my two best shows that I ever played. Uh, and I can't do one. It's one of these two. <clears throat> okay, hotel. Uh, 90, Famous Seattle club. Yeah, mm-hmm. like a rotten ninety. It was the accused and uh, Monty from Grunt Truck uh, or Monty from Roadrunner Records. Oh my! Came down. To, he was looking. He wanted to see the show, but he was sitting here to sign Grunt Truck. He came to the show. You remember me talking to him after mm-hmm, that show? Mm-hmm. And uh, because at that show, everything got knocked over multiple times. Mm-hmm. Like my drums. He was knocked into my drums once. He, I mean, he just got knocked over and knocked my shit over so he put it back up. Mm-hmm. We kept trying to play. But that it started getting so crazy for a couple of months in the slam situation in Seattle that <laughs> it was like you yeah. got ready to have your drum set knocked over mm-hmm. while you're playing. <laughs> Every time. It happened like three or four times in mm-hmm. Seattle shows. And then there was uh, the uh, Ballard Firehouse. <laughs> oh man! When they broke all those windows, they out kicked there? all the windows out, oh, yeah. and just and there was people just flying pumped. everywhere off the state. I mean, it, it was, was the just, crowd were just so drunk and so early, and so they were all out in the streets. There was too yeah. there wasn't enough room for everybody to get in the show. Right, so there's like two hundred. So they started outside. breaking windows. Yeah, yeah, it was great. That, that was crazy. crazy. Now you see that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was a pinnacle of, of what was going on. Yeah, Rob time. Miser was one of the guys who was really uh, in, instrumental in. Uh, Something outside that was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Come on, tell the Tad Rock Candy story, Josh. <laughs> what was that? Or no, no. The, oh, the Rock. Oh, the King the, Cat. The one up in the Cap. Or no. the, oh, oh. the one that was uh, or something. Like that. So, oh, what? I think it's the King. I think Tommy's right. The King Cat Theater down on Sixth Ave. Oh, the Tad and Nirvana. Yeah. The Me and Zapata. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was at that one. Yes. Oh, you were there? I was there. Yeah. Because it was a Tad show, and I, then, I went to many Tad shows. But we I knew really it was them. it was a it was a surprise Nirvana show. Yeah, I had no idea. When I went, and I then had they no call KSW. So there's like what, like a hundred people, mm-hmm. and it's it's showtime. So right. that's how many people are coming. Right, right. You know, big King Cat Theater. We got a hundred people, and they announced it on KSW, and the fucking entire city was there. I mean, you, Alex and Slayer Hippie came. I talked to them at that show, but I mean, that was that was the greatest thing I'd ever seen ever in my life. And then and then I watched Courtney Love in a fight with Tad's girlfriend backstage, and she started. They knocked over a lamp, and it was one of these old kind of lamps, and the lamp broke, uh, the bulb broke, and caught the rug on fire, and the rug went up wow. and started this thing. Classic. It started to fire up a, 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 a drape, and and they were pulling each other and fighting in the back, because Taz's girlfriend was basically, you know, 
drunk. I, I similar would, to Courtney Love. Right. <laughs> they were similar. It will never happen, but I'd love to get Courtney drunk. Love on this couch. <laughs> I, yeah, I hear so many wild stories about her. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, all right. And, but it was, but not, not that, that is just some that that, and then those guys played, man. It was just, it was so incredible. But I mean, the the funness of you're just a kid and and like and you're basically doing the biggest shit in the world right now you know and you're just like you're just having fun you don't even know it but like now i get people I, my mom took photos of that show uh that king cat theater she we she has oh, like probably 50 photos of, of kurt cobain all of their set and uh and you can see dave well Rolf. she should have been photographing your set she did i got photos <laughs> of that too but and then there's and the, some people have video footage and i guess there's a website just for that show <laughs> yeah. really yeah, yeah. And the i'd like are, you can you get that to us because we'll sure put that on the screen so people can see it yeah and they they, they keep asking me for all these photos because i released them in a book remember that book mm -hmm. i did where i yeah. put myself <laughs> yeah. there's a book this, this is funny I want <laughs> this is a sure. great story yeah <laughs> because i i as a drummer you know nobody wants to put a photo of you in a book or nobody <laughs> wants to talk about you in the book they don't want to ask you about what happened but you were there you saw it too anyway so I got my one chance. This guy calls me. He goes, hey, I'm doing an interview. It's a, it's I'm doing a, a grunge book. I'm doing a grunge book. It's a Nirvana book. And I want to get your... And I'm talking to all the people that nobody talked to. So basically, I'm talking to the drummers and the bass players. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I could, so, so I tell him all this stuff. He And uh, and he he said, send me a photo of you. And, and he said, you know, make sure you... Because, you know, I'm going to give you... Uh, Credit. Give oh, you a prop right. oh, or whatever, right. and and so I sent, I sent this photo of myself, a great photo of me playing drums, big, and then I put little photos insets of it was at the show at the show, and the little photos of Nirvana uh. in the corner. <laughs> he put that photo twice in the book. It's in the first page, a big picture of me. Do you know the name of the book? Yeah, it's called uh, All My Friends Are Here. All My Friends Are Here, and who's the author? Uh, I, I'll tell you his name. He would probably kill me for not knowing it. He's such a good guy. I, I, I it's on the tip of my tongue. His name. I'll it's get me. you the information. Okay, yes, please get us. There was a picture of you without a symbol in front of you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, for the first time ever. Oh, yeah. And of course, my mom had to take the photo because she would be the only one that would actually take the photo of trying to get the drummer. Mm -hmm. God, I wish your mom was right here. Her child. Yeah. Jerry Childs. Yeah. Jerry Childs. And Brian. So I would say, what's the biggest show you've ever played? But I'm wondering. What's the, uh, did you guys ever not get kicked out of a club? Oh, yeah. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> I'm just, you know, <laughs> what's your They toured with Cockney Rejects, and that, I'm just for, oh, man. I'm so jealous of that. Yeah, that yeah. would be a good tour. Uh, that was one of my favorite bands ever. And he tells me they did shows, and I was just like, really? Okay, fucking, okay. when did I miss that? And, and that fucking happened. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't one that were on my radar. I had heard of them, but then you, you go I'm out. So I, never that, I never studied I mean, bands before we would go out show. with them. And yeah. We were on, uh, had the same booking agent and stuff, so we'd be get these bands. And I knew Battalion of Saints and, and Dead Kennedys and stuff, but Cockney Rejects, wow. First yeah. night, I was like, oh, these guys are good. Mm. But then when we did a Dead Ted Kennedys tour, and we so did- So you guys opened for the Dead Kennedys. Yeah, yeah, four dates or, um, down the coast. And we get to San Francisco, and it's the Regency wow, Ball. Such a great scene. Yeah, he, even Ray comes up and goes, this is the first time, this is the biggest show we played in our hometown. Really? You know? so, yeah, the classic theater. And I think it held 8,000, 5,000, somewhere around that. So by the time we played, there was 3,000. You know, there was, there was a few people there. And so that's that's the biggest show I remember playing because you get the you get the barrier between <laughs> the barricade. You know, like I say, it's... You guys played a, to, to like the biggest audience down at uh, the Dead Baby Bike yeah, Festival. Fuck, those are big. People people were on... Because I, I remember the Insurgents played. We were playing on the back of this truck and you were, you were standing up there. There was nobody there. For yeah, us. that's weird. And I walked over on your stage. And everybody was there. You guys had a great yeah, show. Yeah. I mean, the whole fucking city. Yeah, and there'd be three bands going at once too. So yeah. it would be kind of. It, sometimes you'd have to. It's like that was at the height of the Thirteen Stars movement. Oh, no, not the <laughs> Dead Babies. <laughs> but you know, whatever that was. Yeah. Time frame. Are they still doing Dead Baby Box? Have you ever been to Dead Baby? I have. I believe they still do it. Stop uh, I think it only stopped because of the word we're not supposed to use. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Pandemic! <laughs> but it's not because of that. It's because of the... Bam! Yeah. Bam. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's why the Dead Baby government. Stopped. It's how the government reacted to the pandemic. It's not the pandemic itself. That's right. <laughs> but okay, yeah, no, it's okay. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're on That's, that's so. a cut, splitting hair. <laughs> what was your most memorable show, Tommy? Uh, well, the biggest one was... Oh, my probably, God. Probably, what? <laughs> the biggest one was probably that uh, 
hemp fest that we did a few oh, years wow. back. I was at that one. I yeah. think I still have the poster downstairs. Yeah, they said they did an overhead grid with like a drone or something, and, and it counted the people per grid, and it was maybe a hundred thousand or something. Holy Jesus! Yeah, I, I was a lot of them, people. and let me tell you, I came down there specifically oh, to yeah. see them, yeah. and it was very difficult even getting within the vicinity. Yeah. I mean, There's a lot. Of I could hear them. Yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't bring my binoculars. I couldn't oh, see them. I was right. so far back because it was just. Yeah, we had no idea because it was a sea of people. Yeah, until I mean, maybe the I don't really. And they were all high. Yeah, and they're all and it's middle of the afternoon. So yeah, it's blazing hot. Yeah. Too. yeah, so I finally look up about halfway through the first song and I look and I'm like, holy That's fuck! Cool. And I just <laughs> look back down and I was like, let me let me grip that for a minute. Okay, I looked again. Oh, well, they're still all there. And yeah, for as far as you can see, yeah. And when you guys played Hemp Fest, uh, marijuana was still illegal, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Right. And, um, it was on the verge, you know. Getting yeah, it was on the verge because I know the dehumanizers played the next year, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the same feeling because it had been legalized. Right, it yeah. did kill Hemp Fest, yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah, eventually, yeah. it slowed yeah. down. Hemp Fest yeah. is still going, but yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. But what, what, what the Hemp Fest was really for people like us, really special, and marijuana was illegal and. They said for a weekend, hey, you guys can all do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, that was the biggest show. And mem most memorable, they're all good. You know, anytime you get on stage is a good How time. about the Pantera? All those Pantera shows. Yeah. Amazing. Touring amazing those band. Awesome. I would yeah. say to me, that if, as an outsider, that seems like it would be a, the more. So that's yeah. what I would call a pop metal band. The first four records by Pantera. <laughs> no. <laughs> power metal. Or no, I mean, power, power metal. metal. Pop metal. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody knows those existed. <laughs> Maybe it would be pop your cherry metal. And they were damn. They were damn good. I thought they were damn good like that. And then uh, I was kind of shocked when they. I, mean, I was like. Drastic. Oh, oh, the oh, the projects in the yeah, jungle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. 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 yeah. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you guys want to see no, your but, fans. Uh, uh, to, uh, to the fans, thank you for your continued, continued support. support. Yeah, and your patience and understanding during this time of crisis. Okay. Um, and anything hopefully, things, hopefully this clears up some misconceptions about some things that have been spoken. Did either of those guys say anything about whether they... Are 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 hardline with what they what they want what they want are they are they are they saying it's never going to happen? Uh, playing with Tommy, right? I don't believe they said that. Um, Just curious. Don't it's probably answer. inferred, but it's probably <laughs> never been stated. Yeah, they, they did. They did say they're gonna. They would like to keep doing the accused AD, and they're gonna you know keep at it, and they're gonna keep at toe tag. So. Um, but uh, I just sure. don't. I just wonder why not just do it with the people that could make the most out of it. It would be the best for the fans. Yeah, you know it's definitely I mean? not treating the, the the fans well to do to go out there and represent yourself as a cut rate version of the real thing. That's not doing the music any good. That's not doing. That's yeah, not. That's not be, getting your value well, for your yeah. dollar. <laughs> you know, it's also really confusing people and and. And diluting the trademark and diluting the good name of the of the of the accused. Okay, and and so this is a good time. My final question was: mm -hmm. Do you guys have anything to say to Alex and Blaine? Which yeah. I think you just said it. So yeah, I think they should say what, whether they whether they're hard lined or they're, you know cause hard lined they're, about playing with Tommy again. Yeah, like just are, at this point because you know life changes. But I'm just curious. I'm not trying to say you should ask them to. I'm just trying to, I'm just wondering what they really think. And then, and then if they're going to go and they want to do all that stuff, I mean, that's not, that's, that's really not my business to say okay. between him. And, so you and want it for the, if you want it for the yeah, camera. I just would like to hear him say But that. I mean, I don't, I, because I, I'm not going to go and start Tad AD or, you know, all the bands that I've been in and made great contributions to. I don't feel like, like, because I, you know what I mean? It's just my personal opinion with bands, all bands, whoever started the band, owns that band, like has the right to keep that band going. And if everybody quits, you, the people that came in later can't take the band. And I've seen it happen before. People do that. They come in and they take the well, band that was started by somebody else. As long as the guy doesn't mind that he took his band. I think, didn't that happen in like Pink Floyd or something? Yeah, like that happens a lot. Well, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, Pink Floyd, Roger Waters. It also happened with uh, with the Qu Queens, right? Because our local version yeah. of it, they had a big, big yeah, dispute about that, the yeah. name. And yeah, you know, Mick and Keith and Steven Tyler and Joe Perry, and these guys hate each other too, you know. But when I guess when you're making, I just think that I don't know. It seems like to me as a fan, 
that people that the best thing with that band is that Blaine and Tommy played together. Well, so, it was one so, of the outside parties who who actually yeah. came and tried to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Tommy, if they yeah. can't, I mean, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. If oh Blaine, yeah, if uh, if Blaine and Alex came to you and said, if, hey, yeah, maybe his, we'd like to put this back together, <coughs> which what well, huh, I'll buy. Uh, I'll buy if pigs suddenly f- grew wings and flew, and those guys asked me that. Yeah, because it would be about as likely. But yeah, I would I would have to consider it. Do a show, you know, you do yeah, something okay. like that. Just do a show. But it would be can have to be considered. It wouldn't just be yeah, you know. Because uh, there's, there's <laughs> issues. I'm telling you, I, I approach these guys with a way that hey, you don't need to talk to each other. We're gonna have this gear here. They're gonna. I mean, that's how I approached it. It wasn't well, just like that's how our together. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Slayer did that. Separate bus, separate tour yeah, buses. That's, that's, like that. that's kind of. I'm, I mean, if you know, if I that's know. if that's as good as it can get, then you know that's what. That's well, what I mean, yeah, I look at the back of the Iron Maiden records, yeah. and every single guy recorded not only in a different studio but in a different country. <laughs> country right. Like, right. That's Is that right? right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any dispute there, but you know, <laughs> right. post climb right. right. I'm I'm a big Iron Maiden fan, though. I, but I don't. I, I'm not a fan once they got that like seventh guitar player. The um, they got like six guitar players on stage. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's the. Yeah. It's yeah, the, the live show is still one of the best ever. Yeah. <laughs> they got a big. You just get rid of the stuff. one guy who does all the guitar twirls. And it's not even plugged in, Josh. He's just there. Oh yeah, like the uh, prop. Yeah. All right. Okay. So is that it? All right. So, okay. ladies and gentlemen, Brian Fitz. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> which one, Dan? Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I'd like to tell uh, Blaine and Alex there. Yeah, man, just yeah, where the fuck yeah, I yeah. ask. You know, just yeah. wear the fucking mask. Oh, right. Get vaccinated. Yeah, no, no, oh, Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. No, I, like, I, did, I like, just wear the damn mask. Yeah, Surgeons true. do it. Yeah. Uh, he's not Josh Snyder. He's Josh Sinder. Josh Sinder. Drummer extraordinaire from the state of Washington. A couple big bands. Cat accused. Uh, Show and tell. Show and tell. My grandfather was a mason. <laughs> Your mom couldn't be here today. My grandmother was an Eastern star. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Thomas Niemeyer. Niemeyer. <laughs> I told you I'd mess it up. Thomas Niemeyer.